catching a reflection in the mirror of something standing in the corner of my room. Watching me, observing me, is it my imagination or insanity? A strange home, a flash of light. I'm overcome, nothing but fight. Otherworldly beings taking me in the night. I'm an extraterrestrial hostage tonight. I wanna run. Dreaded flag, a vengeful sea. Be careful what you say. There's always someone listening. The Dutchman tossed on the sea. I swore, and the devil heard me. Now we're doomed to sail the seven seas for eternity. So yo. Let the ocean winds blow, the line forever we must flow. We sail through them, cursed and condemned. Yo, ho, let the ocean winds blow. A sinister grin across his face said, "You'll be doomed." Place. The devil heard my oath, shame of my boast. Oh, a ghostly ship from the depths, freedom from fear is the only gift of death. Yo, ho, let the ocean winds blow. The light. We 
All right, folks. Welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, and this is what we call PRT. We got about 230 people in the chat. Thank you for sticking with us. I was trying to get ready, get busy. Um, I was trying to get busy, trying to get things done. I was busy. I was trying to get things done, and, and I had to go run errands. I have a job, man. It's a job. It is what it is. So, I had a show plan. Uh oh, Panzer's in the room. Come here, Panzer. Come on, buddy. Come here. Come on, sweetheart. Come here. It's my cat. Come on, buddy. Uh, he's gotten big. You want to bring him? Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. He's got. He's a big boy now. We'll see what he looks like now. You remember him as a kitten, probably. Maybe you saw him when he was younger, little, or whatever. Uh, somebody said, don't quit the show. Well, well at this point, I, I don't. We don't. Let's just, I'll be honest with you. I almost didn't come on tonight. I, I just, you know, I'm not planning on it, but I don't know that. Uh, come on. What's that big boy? What are you doing? You want to say hi to the audience? Say hi to the audience. <laughs> it's like looking down. What are you doing? There you are. Come on. Panzer. Panzer's a nonconformist most of the time, but he's he loves me. Okay. All right. He doesn't want to say hi. Uh he usually he comes in here into the office and then he got when when the door was ended up closing, he got stuck in here. What and this is the truth. I'm gonna tell you the real truth. What happens is my other cat, Martis, knows how to open doors. It's a unique skill, but we have these handles that are like, you know, these little sideways handles, you know what I'm talking about? And um, he, they're not doorknobs, and so he can manipulate those. The other two cats try to, but they don't, they can't do it like he does. So he's really good at it. And so he's perfected it. Uh, so that's what he does. And, and then he... Yeah. So I uh, probably going to be flying solo tonight. Did not expect this. Uh, the person that I had planned to come on tonight had an emergency. And um, then I had a couple other people that were supposed to jump on or whatever. And my normal co host uh, has is. Chris James, who has he's the host of Strange Things with Chris James. Today's a birthday of a, of a nephew, so he's doing that. So he had told me, hey, you know, I'm going to be out. And so uh, nobody's around. And I didn't ask other certain other people, which I should have. And so I talked to two other people, and they were like, hey, yeah, yeah, and then didn't get back with me. So whatever. So somebody had mentioned about the show or whatever. You know, that that is not something that we're planning on doing. Um, but we have some, some, some stuff going on. We're not going to get into it. Uh, and, and that's what they want is for us to go away. Um, God only knows what things are going to be like if we go away. I mean, you know, because when I first got into this, it wasn't peaceful. I mean, there was a war going on when I first came on the scene and, um, you know, some people would like to have you believe that it's, you know, whatever, but it's not. It, it's always been this way since I've been in this field. And it was the same people all the time, bullying people and messing with people and having problems with people. And they like you to believe that, you know, it only started with other certain individuals, but that's not the case, you know. And every time we've been embroiled in a conflict, it's, we've been defending someone. And so I hate to say this, but I mean, going forward, man, I'm just, I can't help everybody. You know, if, if the, and then 
the sad thing is these people, they don't actually, they, after you fighting for them, they just back off and let you do it. And I'm like, no, man, this is not, I didn't get into this. That I'm trying to help. And then you bounce on me, you know, it's like, I'm not going to do this anymore, you know? And so the show really needs to be, it needs to be focused on what we talk about, which is alien abduction, ghosts, Bigfoot, dog, man. This is what we talk about. The weird mysteries, all kinds of weird mysteries to talk about. And these people want to turn it into a big old circus and that's not going to happen. And we try to get out of this. We got out of this last war and a couple of people that were on our team and I stand by this. I think that they wanted to keep it going because without it, they didn't have anything. So that's not my problem. That's your problem. You should have found a hobby or something to do. I mean, you know, I, just, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm just, I'm tired. I don't want to do it. And none of us do, man. None of us do. There's Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Rob, you want to jump on? Somebody want to jump on? Tell me if you want to jump on and we can talk. I don't care. Um, I just want to do a show. That's it. I just want to have, have fun. And um, this is still fun for me. You know, once it, yeah, I, I've said this before, once it stops being fun, you know, because no matter what's going on, no matter how bad things get, no matter how many people act a fool, as long as, um, I don't know why this isn't working. As long as, as long as when I jump on here, I'm happy and I'm having fun. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I know that a lot of these people that are doing what they do, that, that they have no life beyond that. And that's their whole thing is just. Huh. See what that does. So, like I said, as long as I'm having fun, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing what I do. We're gonna keep having fun. I'm not gonna like you know, I'm not gonna let you down. But I just you know today somebody said you know that they were just. I sent you the link, Rob. If you want to jump on. Last night we had a good show. We talked about uh, skinwalkers. Uh, post that comment there. Al Aleph Prime says, do you have many mentioned stories? I do. <clears throat> now, they're not as numerous as the stories involving the greys, but I, I always take a, a keen interest in uh, the, the, I, the stories that I get involving the mantids because they're very... Uh, Mm, I don't want to say unique. Um, they're very interesting. They're very interesting when you get those stories about the mantid creatures. They also, I think that what they do, I think they're hyper intelligent. And what I think they do, I think they all are. But I think what these mantid creatures do is in how they fit into everything. They hire other uh Celestial beings, if you want to call them that, or interdimensionals, or whatever you want to call them, they use them as mercenaries, and I believe that that, that is what they do, man. I think that that's a big part of it. Um, thank you for that donation. Uh, says Kez Mark McIntyre says, "Hey Josh, you're a history buff. What's your opinion on the movie about King Baldwin the Fourth of Jerusalem?" From I have not seen that movie, so I don't know. I couldn't comment on it. Uh, Oh, this one says, what is it? Harpin, Harpin Blues. Um, wish I could donate more, but you're, you're, you've been bringing the truth lately in our current state of affairs. It's such a breath of fresh air. Lots of us prefer you on Saturday over Netflix. Well, I appreciate that. I see there's 350 people in here. And uh, Debbie Cothra says, we love you, Josh, and family. Our prayers with you. P.S. My monthly cult fees for, for lower level. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and that is a joke about the cult, and they always something, you know. 
I don't want to post this comment. Thank you, Nikki. I appreciate that comment. Jake says, am I the only one learning about demon face syndrome? I don't know. Audacious Amber says, is it members only that show their super chat at the top of live chat? What does that mean? No, and it's anybody that donates. My name don't pop up there when I give. Really? And Wendy Eater says, wolf or spiritual attachment spreading like a virus? Yes, I would say so. But that's been happening for a long time. That's not just something new. Tara Baby says, I enjoy painting. What is your favorite colors? Oh, man, I got a lot of favorite colors. I like uh, I like different shades of blue. And I like gray. I know it's a shade. It's not a color. But I like the way it looks mixed with the different, uh, different like, blues. Like, blue and gray mixed together is one of my favorites. It's probably my favorite. A bluish gray or a grayish blue, whichever, whatever you want to call it. I also like this color up here at the top. If you see, uh, like, right up. Oh, let me move my hand over a little bit more. Oh. When it disappears. That's pretty cool, though. I like that color. Anthony picked that. I didn't even know he did that, but um, that's a really pretty color. I like teal, you know, stuff like bluish green. I like green a lot, too. But so I guess if I had favorite colors, that would be it. Purple. I like purple, but it's like I have to be in the mood for it, type purple. Sometimes I'm, I like, I'll see purple or something and I'll be like, wow, that's really cool, you know? And then other times I'm kind of like put off by it. Did you ever tell that ghost, what is that? Ghost ship story. Oh, okay. So tomorrow we got to do that. We got to do that tomorrow. We got to talk about that. And then there's another one about the Cambodian temples. I need to talk about that one. And then there was another story, too, that I was going to talk about, and I can't remember what it was. If anybody in the chat, though, can tell me, put it in capitals, um, we'll talk about that. Harp and Blues says, Josh, the abandoned buildings used by covens. Please expound. And TGC they didn't, we didn't get into that. They did not tell me anything about that, and I didn't ask. It's not, that's above my pay grade, too. I don't want to know it. Two Shadows, thank you for that donation. Greatly appreciated. Definitely have legal fees now, so... It's unfortunate, but we have to. I had to stop. Rougarou, thank you, Debbie. That one is one I'm going to talk about. So Sunday, let me write this stuff down so I can. These, this is not my normal note taking pads, but I will write it down right here. While I'm thinking about it, the ghost ship. We never got to talk about that one. Yep. My, my, my handwriting is so bad, I can barely read it myself. And the Rougarou. That's an interesting story, too. I got some really good ones, man, that some people have been giving me lately, some really good information. Good stuff. Um, scary. I mean, like, it's, let's put it this way. It's good to us because we're like, wow, that's cool. That's entertainment. But to them, you know, it was pretty damn terrifying but it, it is also it's cathartic for people to talk about their experiences which is one of the things that inspired me to do the saturday show because it really is centered around um yeah thank you love cat for, for for saying that um it is really something that that um when people give you information about um, sorry, I had to take a lozenge and I'm chewing on it about mantids 
grays and reptilians, you know, you really want to Oh, I was wondering what that was. Anthony's got like these little stars going on the sides of it. And I was like, I was seeing them over here on, on uh, this side over there. And I was like, what the hell is that? Thank you, Dennis, for that donation. Appreciate it. So when somebody gives you stories about, you know, demons and angels and entities or whatever, I mean, like, you got to remember, this is somebody's encounter. This actually happened to somebody, and they they gave this this story to talk about. So somebody went through this. This isn't just like fun and games, like, oh, oh this is cool, you know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and and I'm not one of those people that is, is going to act all like, oh, I'm a therapist. I'm trying to help people and get them through this. No, I'm trying to get stories and encounters and bring them to you. But I do spend time talking to people and if, if they want to talk about things and they, and they, and they're always free to continue to, to, to reach out to me. Um, for the most part, most of the people who I've, I've managed to talk to and help, um, I say help, you know what I mean? But like give them, uh, um, a little bit of, you know, like answers, you know, a little bit of answers of what I can say, uh, what I know. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I try to be there for people, you know, as much as I can. But I'm like I said, I'm not a I'm not a qualified to be a therapist. I'm not here to to be a psychiatrist. I can't. And when people ask me, they go, "What do you think is going on with this? What is this?" I don't lie to them and tell them I know. I may give you a little bit of answers and say, "Hey, this is one of the possibilities. This is a a, a plausible answer." But I'm not going to tell you it's a hundred percent that I know what is happening because I don't. I really don't know what is happening. I can't tell you a hundred percent, but I can speculate. That's all I can do. And it's just pure speculation. Now I will get into an encounter right now. I'll tell you what's okay. happening. There was a woman named Alicia, Alicia, Alicia who had reached out to me and wanted to talk to me about her encounter. And it involved uh, her being abducted for a long, long time. And one of the things that we see in the abduction scenarios and this is most important to remember, is that it usually starts when they're young and it goes on and on and on. And, and, and I've had people come on the show. And we've talked about this. A lot of times it's a familial thing. It is something that happens through their bloodline. It's something that happens. Um, the hell? Did y'all hear that? That was weird. Uh, but anyway, it's something that happens um, through. Uh, well, I appreciate it. you're full of compliments today. Nikki says, "I truly believe Wolf is the closest genuine modern day philosopher there is. His knowledge of history is phenomenal and makes us actually able to learn what we're not told." Well, I appreciate that. I try. Um, you know, when, when when somebody comes to you and they they tell you, "I've been abducted since I was a child." That's Typically what happens, right? So then you start going into the, you know, different, you know, whatever, like, like, what is your earliest memory of these beings? Well, this particular person says the earliest memory I had was six. I was six years old. She goes, I remember I was in first grade and I was going to sleep in class. And I asked Alicia, I said, Alicia, how long do you think that this, you know, um, went on for? And she, now she did remember she's 36 years old now. So you got to remember, this is somebody who's been going through this for 30 years, okay? And she said, she goes, in my earliest memory was I was six years old and I was falling asleep in class. And so my mother, my mother, see, this is the, the key. I think this is part of why we're, this is what we're dealing with. Her mother was into transcendental meditation. Her mother was very much like a, uh, and she had her very late in life. Um, she was almost 50 when she had her. She was not expected. She was not expected at all. But she said, my mother was very wild, never settled down, had gone through multiple boyfriends, and was very good looking. Until she was in her late 40s, early 50s, she was still a bombshell, according to her. And so she ended up getting with a guy who was a very weird guy that she met at a festival. Funny thing, too, is that they met at a festival here in Austin. That festival is called Austin City Limits. So she would not have come to be 
if it wasn't for her mother having this encounter with a, with a whatever. So she came to a festival here in Austin and she met a guy and they had a child and that was her. And she said that this was something that happened like years ago, whatever they were at this, uh, not, not the festival itself, but it was like a, uh, a get together at a place called the broken spoke. And they actually filmed Austin city limits at that place. But she said that for years and years and years, her mother would come to this festival and she would bring her along and with this weird guy. Let me introduce her. Hey, Rob, what's going on, man? Hey, Josh, how's it going? Excuse me. I saw you in the chat and I said, dude, why not bring Rob on, dude? Yeah. Um, no, no, it's awesome. I'm just kicking around. I got something going on at midnight, 11 central. So I said, yeah, I was just sitting here watching some stupid documentary. <laughs> you know, I mean, I watch documentaries about stuff that we're all involved that we all like, and this one was getting kind of out there. So I said, Yeah, I'm gonna watch PRT instead, much better. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, dude. Yeah, oh, so so Joe just messaged me, and Joe has a, a an event going on at the gas station, it's called the gas station where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was filmed, and I was wondering about that because he had said something about it. Um, and he was supposed to come on, and he just messaged me right now, saying he's still at the event. So, and also say a prayer for Truth and Bass. Uh, I was going to have Truth possibly come on, um, but they are literally dealing with a situation. Their their father had an asthma attack, and he's at the emergency room. So, if you guys, I forgot to talk, just say that. Please say a prayer for them because they're dealing with a with a situation. And asthma is no joke because it can stop your breathing, and it, it's not good. So. Uh, so and Nikki just said, here, love BMR, another, another genuine dude. Yep, he is. I, I like BMR a lot. And so I see you representing the Michigan on there. And of course I yep. would too, if my team had just won the national championship, but I mean, absolutely you have to, you know, I've, I've been waiting a while. We shared a national championship sometime yeah. back, but you know, what's a shared championship, right? That was uh, back when Charles Woodson was there, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, when he actually won the Heisman Trophy. The Heisman year. Trophy as a defensive player, yeah. As a defensive. I think he's still the only one that's won it. Um, mm -hmm. I do believe so, you know. And so, yeah, it's crazy because um, – and we'll get back to the story in just a second, folks, but uh, you almost had the Lions in the Super Bowl. Well, you know, Josh, yeah, we talked about this. We, Good team. I mean, they might have even yeah. beaten the Chiefs. I mean, well, you know, the Chiefs. I tell you what, I felt more confident playing the Chiefs had we won like, than versus like San Francisco. To be honest, um, yeah, because we had we had beaten the Chiefs uh, the very first game of the NFL season this past oh, year, yeah. and uh, but the Lions. There was two drop balls by a, no, a guy that was normally dependable throughout the entire season, so yeah, that cost us. Dan, you know, Dan Campbell, our coach, he's gambling Dan, and he maybe made a questionable call. But I tell you what, he's been doing that all year, so I can't fault the guy for sticking true to what brought them 30 minutes from the Super Bowl, you know? So Yeah. So we got next year. Happened, though. We'll yeah. see what happens this year. And, and we but. do have the draft here in Detroit here. I'm going down to the NFL draft here uh, Thursday, April 25th through the 28th. So hopefully I get some good seats. Hopefully I get on TV because I'll go, I, you know, first event in Detroit. So I always watch the NFL draft. So that'll be a, a, something to a take in. So I'm looking forward to that here in another three weeks. Well, that should be fun. We'll see yeah. if uh, my teams do anything. But so let me get back to this story. What we were talking about is is uh, the the mantids and reptilians, and that was the the the, the show of what it's going to be about or what it was going to be about. So we had a, a woman that had reached out to me, and she was actually uh, the, the guy that uh, was her dad, which she didn't really know him very well. Uh, her mother met her, her him here in Austin at a, a place called The Broken Spoke, where they had the Austin City Limits. Now it's a festival. They have it every year, and it's whatever. I don't know if it was a festival back then, um, but she did say that it was a festival. And I said, yeah, and it's right here in Austin. But she doesn't live here. She lives up in Minnesota. But one of the things that she um, told me about her abduction scenario was that when she was a child, she was having these really weird dreams. And that's what she thought they were. She thought they were just really bizarre dreams. And she thought, I'm just a child and I have a vivid imagination. You know, she literally, she's like, I had these thoughts as a kid. I was like, maybe my imagination is, is just going, you know, whatever, because people were telling her that. 
But she said, I began to believe it. And I thought, well, this is what's happening. There is no such thing as these aliens because her mom's boyfriend at the time that was living with them said that they don't exist. There's no aliens. He was a very uh, sort of flippant Christian in the way that <clears throat> when it suited him, he was a Christian and he quote from the Bible. And then when it didn't, he wouldn't, uh, he would not, you know, pay attention to it and was into all kinds of other things. Like he did a lot of drugs and booze and things like that. And so, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of weird uh, stuff that, that happened to her as a child in her upbringing. And she eventually, she said by the time she was eight, after she had been going through this and her earliest memories of when she was six, but she, I don't know. I think in my opinion, from talking to her, I think that she went through it before that. I mean, I think it was going on, you know, probably her whole life. And then she was eight years old and she, this is one of the creepy freaky things that happened to her. She got up to get a drink of water and she saw her mother in the kitchen. Now get this standing in front of the fridge with, with her hand, like she's going to open the refrigerator, but she's like in suspense, what we would call suspended animation. Mm -hmm. Like she's standing there frozen and she's not moving. And so she gets up, you, you go get a drink of water. And she's like, mom, mom. And her mother is just standing there frozen. Then she turns and she sees these two, well, she called them white, but I know them as the grays. But she said they're these two white beings and she described the grays. Um, and she said that she looked and saw them in the hallway and she's like, you would probably call them the grays. I said, yeah, I would. But she was, but they were white, like, like real pale. And she said they came out of the darkness and they grabbed her and she couldn't move. And then she just went unconscious. Uh, and then she woke up in her bed and her clothes were rearranged and everything. And they didn't, they don't bother to like dress people back correctly. I mean, that's one of the things that we've noticed about these beings. But she said something happened when she was 12. Now, when she was 12, this is when she was taken aboard a craft, uh, courtesy of the Greys, or as she said, that they were tall whites. But some people do say that that is a different species. The tall whites are different, even though they and the, and the tall blues, the small Greys, and then the tall Greys all kind of look the same, but they're considered to be by some uh, as a different species. Now, when she was taken aboard this craft, and this is very interesting, folks, I'm going to tell you, she met a being that had a long, elongated neck, and she told me this. She says, have you ever seen uh, the second Star Wars movie? Now, I thought she was talking about Empire Strikes Back, and I said, well, yeah, everybody's seen Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. And she's like, no, 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 the, the episode two, like the beginning, because, you know, According to Lucas's timeline, it went for episode four was Star Wars and then five yeah. was Empire and six was Return of the Jedi. She goes, no, the second one where the guy, she didn't really know the, the movie that well. She just remembers those. The uh, They're called the, uh, the uh, Kiminoans or something like that. I can't mm -hmm. remember the name of them. They're like a species in Star Wars. But she said that they, she's like, she's like, they're the ones that were making the clones. And she said that uh, she remembers uh, Boba Fett's dad. That's all she remembers him by his name. I said, okay, you're talking about Django Fett. And then, so I said, okay. And she goes, you remember that place where they were at? And one of the Jedi came, that's Obi-Wan. Well, she said that those, those beings, it looked like one of them with the elongated neck. And they had a, a weird, like, I guess it would be like a proboscis. What's it called? The, um, the mandibles and all that, that the, right. the, that the insectoids have. Mm -hmm. Because it had this weird, like, like, uh, like protruding jaw with these weird snapping-looking deals on it, and uh, so I immediately I, I told her I said, okay, I know what you're talking about. It's that is a type of mantid. That is a mantid, and what they do is they abduct people just like the greys, except what she was describing to me, and what I'm going to tell the audience is not. You got to you got to think, man. This is not a normal um, uh, abduction. Um, because these beings being together like that. Now I had, I personally, this is the only account I've ever gotten of those type of beings, uh, being in the same room with the reptilians. Uh, okay. now I have heard of the mantids working with reptilians and even working with dogman type creatures. There was somebody who gave me a story right here in Austin outside of Mount Bonnell that claims that they were abducted by mantids. And I've told that story on the show. Now, here is what's really uh, weird. 
It's like it's like we say that, but like it's weirder than the rest, <laughs> isn't it? It's it's weird again. Yeah, it just weird gets again. more weird, right? So yeah. he's up aboard this craft, and so when she's up in in the atmosphere, the Earth's atmosphere, she's not out in space. She can look down and see the cities, like all you know, the city where she's from, which was St. Paul, and she can look down and see over it, whatever. Well, she lives outside of it, but you know, in the suburb. And she's like, she can see it. She can see everything. And she's like, and years later, she's like, I, I, I rode a helicopter and I saw like the countryside outside of there and I could see the city, you know, and I, she's like, and I saw like everything I had seen, but, but closer up, you know, and uh, she said it triggered her and she had like a flashback and started freaking out and was like, started demanding that they, they lower the helicopter and her husband's like, what's going on? What the heck? You know? So she's been dealing with this for a long time. So when she's 12, she gets taken aboard this craft and there is this being that comes out to her and it talks to her through a form of like what she calls telepathic communication. We've heard this before, but it also says something very shocking to her. It says that they were the ones that actually created her because according to her, they, her dad was a hybrid. He was one of them. So then she goes and she talks. She, she talks to these beings. They tell her all this crazy stuff. She goes home, right? She talks to her mother the next day, and she's like, "Mom." And she tried to talk to her before when she was like nine, but her mom wouldn't listen. So she's like, "My mom was always doing something. She was a hippie, burnt out hippie, as she called her." And she says, "Mom, I need to talk to you." She's like, I was taken aboard a craft, and I remember it. This isn't just a dream. And she tells her what happened, and she says, look, these beings talked to me, and one of them talked to me. She's like, there was this one reptilian-looking lizard guy, and there were these little gray-looking, white-looking dudes with big black eyes, and then there was this tall one. And now, the description of the tall one is like a mixture of the gray and the mantids. There are some mantids that have, we get descriptions of that are big, tall, and they look almost just like praying mantises, except they tend to be like gray or brown, um, not typically green. But this one, this one is something I believe it's a hybrid between one or more different species. Because there are other uh, alien races that are above that, that are higher up on the on the food chain. And they have done genetic tampering. Now, I, I know this because, and only that I believe, I don't know. Right. But I know, know this information because I've been told by multiple sources that these beings do do that. And that they were genetically altered and other races were created, you know, by higher up uh, uh, beings on the upper echelon. Um, so what ended up happening is she talks to her mother and her mother, she says, my mom's like, she says a burnt out hippie. So she said, my mother, she goes, imagine Jodie Foster on crack. Okay, so on. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, right. kind of broke the, you know, cause I was, she's telling me all this horrific stuff and she's like, my mother, she's like Jodie Foster on crack. And I was with Tony and we were like going like, what? We kind of. And I said, sorry, we were laughing, but she's like, no, no, it's, it's okay. You know, it's, 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 it's not, it's funny. But anyway, she said, that's what she was. She was just a, a very beautiful woman. Um, but, but she was like even more pretty than Jodie Foster. And then she said, you know, she goes, but I, I told her myself, I was like, well, me personally, I don't think Jodie Foster's that pretty, but she goes, my mother was though. She's like, she's very pretty. She, she, she's yeah. not. Jo Jodie Foster has her moments in some movies where she's pretty and others where she's just. She just looks like a man. Average. <laughs> she looks like a man. <laughs> so when we were talking, she said, she, she told her mom, she's like, mom, is there something that I should know about my dad? And she says, well, you know, we were only together for a few months after you were, after I got pregnant with you. And she goes, and then he came back into our lives when you were three and he hung around for several months and mooched off of me. And then I kicked him out. Mm. And she, she's like, okay, I get that. But do you have pictures of him? And she said, yes, I do. And he was from Austin. So she says, here's some pictures. So she shows her some photos. She's like some old photos of him. She, does, she didn't show me the photos. I asked her if she could because her and her mother are not speaking. And her, those are her mother's photos. She said, but if my, if my mother ever decided to speak again, her mother is uh, uh, quite elderly now. So having had her when she was like 45 or something like that, when she was, I think she said she was almost 50 or mid to late 40s, whatever. 
So she said, my mother's still alive, still kicking, but she's uh, not in good health. And it comes from a lifetime of doing drugs. But she said, despite her doing all the drugs and the booze, she ate healthy. She was like a vegan and ate healthy. And it, 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 it all equals out now. Yeah, it all balances out, right? So she, she <laughs> that's what I said. I was like, well, that's good. At least she's, she's, she's doing the drugs. She's smoking the crack. But she, hey, you know what? She's not eating dairy products. That's a plus. Clog your arteries, right? Uh, the calcium bomb, right? So I told her, I said, so so your mother is like, you're not talking to her. And she says, you know, and she says that my mother's in bad health. She's like, one of my siblings, my younger brother, has been taking care of her. And he has a vested interest in 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 not keeping, not letting us speak. So he's been kind of causing a rift between them. Because she married a guy who passed away and left her a sizable amount of money. So her her brother is just biding his time for her so he can, you know, whatever. So she told him, she said, I don't care about the money. I don't care about any of that. All I want is some pictures, you know, of, of my dad and whatever. So that's, she said, that's all she cares about at this point. You know, the, the mother is not um, someone that she wants to associate with. So she looked at the pictures. And one of the pictures, she says, I can see in this picture, he's got a long skinny neck and he's got a weird shaped head. And so she asked her mother, she says, she's like, he looks odd. And she goes, yeah, he had these striking eyes. And she said that, uh, she asked her mom, she's like, was there anything unusual about him? She goes, well, yeah, he was a mooch and a bum and, and whatever. But get this. He claimed that he had been being abducted his whole life too. So she said, just like your dad, you both have had these weird stuff that's happened, you know? And she said, her mom talks very hippie-ish, I'll do a little impression. She's like, you both have had these weird experiences with the star people, you know? And, you know, there's a reason for that, you know, because he did a lot of drugs. And she was like, okay. She's like, but I didn't. And I haven't. He's like, I've been very straight edge for most of my life. She is a born again Christian. And she said that, that the abductions are still going on to this day. Now, I told her something, Rob. I said, let me ask you this, Alicia. I was like, did you ever stop to think maybe if you were stronger in your faith? I mean, this is something that I believe in, that you could maybe halt this or stop this. And she says, I don't think so. She's like, I don't really believe that. And I told her, I said, well, I do. And I think you should try it the next time it happens. And she said that she can't remember anything happening over the last two to three years. One time, though, when she was a kid, she was playing softball. Now, get this. This is a really weird thing. She hit the ball in the middle of a softball game, and it was a foul tip. You know how the ball, and it spun up, and it hit her in the face, and it literally knocked her unconscious. Now, it's a freak thing, but I've seen it happen in playing hardball, hard pitch. Uh, somebody got a foul tip, and they hit themselves oh, yeah. inside the head. But luckily, the helmet deflected it. But she said this was in practice, and it was like uh, – or she said this wasn't like a practice or whatever. She said this was a game, and the game had to be stopped, and everybody came and went, oh, are you okay, whatever. And she said the ball hit her just right, like right above her eye, near her temple, and just below where the helmet, uh, you know, where they have that shield, the, 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 the part that comes down, you know, yeah. like on a hat like this right here. Right. So she was telling me about that, just where the lip comes down. And she said that the ball hit her in the head, and she went unconscious and she goes, and I was only out for like maybe a minute, not even. And she's like, and she goes, and I sat up while I was unconscious. And she goes, and I had like this mini dream, like these little mini dreams that you have. People who are insomniacs, they will report having going to sleep and then having like this mini dream that takes place. And it and it's like all this information is dumped on them at one time because your your, your mind is literally what it's doing is trying to survive. So it's shutting down and then it's trying to, to gather information and process it through the dream. That's what that's what scientists believe, some scientists. Um, I take a more spiritual approach. I think that it's the same thing, but it's being done. It's being powered spiritually. Uh, and so. So what 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 uh, ended up happening is these people, they wake her up and they tell her, like, are you OK? You OK? Whatever. And she says, I can still see after I wake up the stuff that was in my dream. And I said, what were you dreaming about? She said, I was dreaming about being in outer space. And I was like, I could see lights and everything around me. Um, like I was on some sort of space station. 
And there were these two beings there, these weird long neck beings. She goes, and this was when I was 16, right? But she said that this, this, these beings, what happened when she was a kid, when she it was first introduced to the one, she only saw it again one more time. And that happened when she was 13. So it was 12 and 13. She had seen this being. So she saw it again when she was 15 years old. And when she got hit in the head by the softball, she saw this being with another one standing there. And then she goes, I knew it was the same one. And this being at this point had told her when she was 13, kind of to reaffirm what she saw when she was 12, she asked the being the question, who are you to my dad? And she says, I am your dad's mother. So this being literally was her grandmother, according mm -hmm. to her. So she said, I knew that there were weird things. I had weird like traits and things like that. And she goes, and as I got older, I, and I, they seemed to kind of fade away. But she goes, when I was little, sometimes I would see things in like weird patterns and like a grid, like a kaleidoscope. And her mother told her that her dad was always doing drugs, always doing drugs. And I think it was a form of self-medication because he knew that there was something off about him. Now, whether or not he actually knew that he was in a, not just an abductee, but a hybrid who had been given the genetic DNA, his dad was the donor, and this woman was the one who gave birth to him. Now, genetically, not did not actually give live birth, whatever. Now, I'll tell you that about that in a minute. So what she said was her mother told her, she's like, yeah, he was always on drugs and he would talk about seeing this, everything as a kaleidoscope. And then his eyes were real sensitive to light and had all kinds of issues. And he always wanted to be in the dark. And she was like, you're like a vampire. You always want to be in the dark. You don't want to. And he had really, really horrific nightmares, uh, basically night terrors for years. And he would not get help. All he did was sink further and further into drug addiction. But he told her many times that they come for me in the night. They take me and they and they take me aboard a ship and they they do tests on me. They take my blood. He's like, and I've been introduced to multiple types of beings. Now, this is this is also interesting. And this seems to be a recurring theme with some women that date different guys, like just going from guy to guy and never settling down. She said that multiple guys that she was with had been abductees, which makes sense. So one day she talks to her mother. This was when, fast forwarding, she was 22 years old. She was dating a guy who was really into this whole transcendental meditation, just like her mom was at one time. And she said, get her, get your mother to come and let's see if we can get her to do a, a reg like regressive hypnosis, you know, where you go back and, and you find out if, you know, whatever. So after a couple of weeks of, of pestering her mother, she finally just decided to break down and bribe her. She's like, look, I'll just give you 50 bucks if you come up there and let this man hypnotize you. And she said, OK, fine. So she takes her to this guy who actually was not in Minnesota. It was in Wisconsin. But she, she they make the drive to Wisconsin. They, it's, it, you know, and she goes, this is long drive. We had to go all the way to this, you know, out of state to meet this guy. So he regresses her. Mm hmm. Come to find out that the mother has memories of not only witnessing her ex-boyfriend that she had this daughter with, and Alicia's dad, <clears throat> but she herself had been abducted. And not only that, but she had an implant. And the implant was in the back of her neck, and she had long, long hair, and she always would never cut her hair. And she said anytime she ever thought about cutting her hair, she felt like something was telling her not to. She thought it was some sort of spiritual thing. But come to find out, she had an implant toward the base of her neck. Now, when they did the regression, the guy literally put his hand up there and he felt it. He said, yep, she's got an implant. So they knew. Now, Alicia had one too, but it was in her leg. And she said it was like a, it was like a little chip, like a little weird grain of rice-like thing. Now, the different species of these beings, whether you want to call them outer space aliens or inner earth beings or whatever you want to call them, they do seem to have a calling card, and it always involves some sort of like chip or something that they put into people. Now, here's the interesting thing about that. When you go and talk to these people, they will tell you sometimes it's like a grain of rice. Sometimes it's like a BB. Sometimes it's like a little square. Um, I had one person that said it was like a little, little half a triangle looking thing. 
And when they let go of it, it flew onto like a magnet that they had across the room. Really weird, weird stuff, right? Well, hers was this little grain of rice looking thing. And she said that there was a weird nodule or bump on her dad. He had one too. And the mother said that it was the inner thigh. Only, only someone that was intimate with him would know this. But his was larger uh, and more, you know, whatever. He had tried himself to cut it out, and it didn't work. He almost uh, died. He almost bled to death by cutting himself open. And so what they did was they went to a guy that was recommended by this hypnotherapist and said, look, we've been dealing with regression therapy, people having, you know, alien abduction, and I'll send you to someone who can remove that chip. And they'll do it for a cheap, you know, whatever. Um, but and, and the doctors aren't going to do anything. They're just going to tell you, oh, it's okay. It's just something that got in there uh, embedded. And that happens all the time. They'll say that. It's just right under the hypodermis, whatever. Don't worry about it. Um, but this, you see, they told her, they're like, you really need to get this removed. So they did. And they ended up going to your state, Michigan. And this person lived way, way down the very bottom of, of the state of Michigan. And she's like, and they live way out in the middle of nowhere. And she thought when we were driving out there, she's thinking, this is like a spooky. And she knows that I do talk about dog man and werewolves. And she said, it was such a creepy place. She goes, I was thinking that there was going to be a werewolf that was going to jump out of the woods at me. She's like, so we get there and we think immediately this is a bad idea. So this guy, instead of removing the chip, like he was supposed to, he starts asking all kinds of questions. But then she said, she goes, I felt really uncomfortable and kind of cornered. And she's like, my mother the whole time was just no help. He was, she was stoned. Her boyfriend was there. He was very supportive. This guy was very supportive. And he said, look, you know, this is going to help. You got to get rid of this thing. You got to get rid of it. And they won't be able to track you. Um, so this guy starts asking her a bunch of questions. Instead of just getting to work, he's like, look, I need to know what I'm dealing with. And when he started asking her questions, she thought he was just being a nosy guy and just trying to get in her business. And she's like, what business is it of yours? What, you know, whatever. And he said, look, I need to know what I'm dealing with. He's like, because when I remove these trackers, guess what? They come for me. So he said, I need to know exactly what beings you've encountered. Now, this is where it gets really interesting here. She says, well, I've, I've encountered this one and this kind of one and this one. And when he when she got to, and he was okay with it being a manted gray hybrid. But he was very concerned about one thing. He said, you say that you've met the reptilians. And she says, yes. And this guy says, okay. How many times have you interacted with them? And what did they look like? So she described this reptilian that had a very flat nose. It wasn't one of them with the big nose. Some of them have those. And it was kind of like it kind of stuck out like it was like your nose if you were to cut it off at an angle. And this really small mouth and this really big eyes. And he goes, okay, that's a hybrid reptilian. And he's like, and you've only encountered it how many times? He said twice. He said, did it ever speak to your interact? And he said, no. She goes, okay. So he said, okay, we could probably deal with that. And he goes, with this mantid creature, it wasn't a full-on paying mantis-looking being. And she said, no. And she, and then she's like, why is that important? And he goes, well, let's get the chip out, and I'll tell you. So he did. He did it to her and did it to his mo her mother, got him out, got the chips out, whatever. The mother was like in and out of consciousness, was not even really whatever. She was no help. She was on pills and, you know, zanned out or whatever, as she said. Um, she told us that basically her mother was a drunkie, you know, and, and just on drugs all the time, booze, whatever. But hey, she was vegan, so that all made up. For well, that it. again, it, it 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 equalized out everything, and now she's okay today, I'm sure. And I got to tell you, when you're going through that story, man. I started getting the chills because it resonated. Because I got to tell you this about a month ago. I had this young lady on the show with me and Krista during the afternoon. And I'd seen this lady on a couple channels. I said, wow, I got to get a hold of her. Her name is um, Karen, Karen Wilkinson. She's an author. She sent me her book, Evil Spawn or The Evil Seed or something. I got it in the corner. I got 20 books there I haven't opened yet. I just yeah, but like me. 
<laughs> so I had her on, and I got to tell you, it was one of the most fascinating shows I did because a lot of things you said is kind of mirrors some of the things that uh, Karen was talking about. And she went on to began to tell me that when she was five or six, maybe seven years old, as a little girl, she would have all these wild and vivid dreams. Didn't quite place what the dream was all about, but she knew that she was out of her body, and it seemed like the dream was just happening in real time. And as she got older, in her early teens, late teens, the dream started getting more descriptive, where now she is on what she said was a spacecraft, and there was the alien greys, tall alien greys, surrounding her and she was lying down on like like i guess a gurney or a table and the room was a white room white all the way around and these beings were standing in front of her and, they, and she knew that they were performing some sort of experiment on her didn't know quite what she never felt it in the dream when she woke up the next day she would just have a cold sweat and nothing, nothing was wrong with her. And as she got older, she started experiencing these like nodules on the back of her neck. Okay. She had gone to the doctor several times and, um, they, some were removed and some were left in place yet. The doctors could not tell her what exactly it was. Unlike your story, it wasn't a chip. It wasn't anything metallic. It was kind of a growth in her body. Okay. On the back of her neck. As she gets older, she's lying in bed. And throughout her life, too, Josh, what's interesting, she had a variety of uh, different boyfriends, a, a husband, a couple husbands and such. And uh, I guess the relationships never lasted or what have you. So one night at her bed, off before she falls asleep, she sees this alien gray at the foot of her bed. She goes, Rob, I know I'm awake. It's looking down at me and it communicates. We know you have questions. When you drift off to sleep, you'll get some answers. So now I, I don't know how this woman fell asleep. I would have been terrified. Yeah. You know, I mean, come hey, on. Hey, man, that would have really been a, a bummer. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to sleep. You know, yes, 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 yes. I mean, if I was a drug addict, I'd be hitting the, the local vendor, right? So. She drifts off to sleep, doesn't remember drifting off to sleep, but now she remembers she's back in the same white, this white room with the white walls and these be these beings. Telepathically being communicated to this woman from one of the beings, she doesn't know which one, said, we've been using you throughout the years for our bodies. We're using you as a a source or a, um, what do you call it, using her womb uh, as an incubation center to produce these hybrid alien slash human, human aliens, I guess it is, right? In this during this dream, they're communicating it to her, and they had told her that they had removed several throughout her lifetime. And they also went on to explain that the nodules, every nodule on the back of her neck was the amount of babies that they pulled from or extracted from her. Yeah. And, and well, so moving on through the story, it was communicated that you will meet one of your children fully mm -hmm. grown in adulthood. She wakes up the next morning. What a terrible nightmare. But now throughout her years, though, Josh, she knows something's going on. She knows now she's being abducted by something, an alien life form. And then she remembers about being told about you're going to meet your child. Now, this young woman has several children of her own through her marriage, healthy kids, her natural born children from her husband. She says, Rob, about six months later, after being told that I would come across one of my children, she says, I was in a restaurant. She goes, I happened to be by myself. I was eating. It was right around lunchtime. And across from her table, she sees this other young lady. Blonde hair by herself. And this young woman was staring 
at her. Now she says, Rob, I got to tell you, I looked at this woman, opaque face, kind of a pale face, white, white face. And she says that it resembled one of my children. It looked like it could have been one of my natural offspring. She said, I had a pit in my stomach. She goes, oh, my Lord, is this really the hybrid alien that I was told that I carried or that they taken from me? So the from the dinner table, from the, the table inside the restaurant, this young lady gets up. She proceeds to the bathroom. So now Karen, the guest on the show, she has to follow this woman because now she knows that this is meant to be. She was told this. She gets up follows into the bathroom well she gets into the bathroom and the, stall, and the bathroom is empty but then so she starts looking into the stalls gets to one of the stalls the door is shut and there's somebody in there she kind of looks down yes she sees shoes you know the whole nine yards so she goes over she now is panicking and she's starting to sweat and she tries she turns on the faucet and she's just trying to dry off cool herself down and she's waiting for this supposed hybrid child to emerge from the, the stall. She's waiting and she doesn't really want to turn back. She doesn't know. She doesn't want to knock on the door. She's waiting, but it seemed like it took a while before this event mm -hmm. unfolded. So now she can't take it any longer. She goes back over to the stall and she looks down, doesn't see any shoes there. Doesn't see the legs or the feet there. She opens the door, which wasn't locked, and the person that was sitting in there is gone. It did not get out or walk past her. It did not. She knows she was the only person in there during this entire time. She says with maybe a lapse, eight or ten minutes. She was kind of dejected. She was like, wow. I mean, I thought this is going to be more than this. I want to speak with this, this being, right, this hybrid, my child, perhaps. So she leaves the restaurant ba bathroom, goes to where she was eating. And sure enough, she looks to the table where this young lady was. And the young lady is gone. So she pays her check, leaves her bill. She leaves. She goes home and she's frantic. And now, Josh, she's telling me every time she goes to bed, she is trying to openly communicate and get a hold of these aliens to explain. She said a year went by. Nothing. The year went by and nothing until one night, once again, she felt the same vivid dream was abducted in this dream. Again, she's in the white room with the four white walls with the alien creatures now, but there's somebody else in this room. And it's the woman, the young lady that she saw in the restaurant a year prior, identical, reaches out to her and said, mother, I'm your child from a different world. Wow. I wanted you to know that. The dream ended. She woke up. And to this day, she still claims to have these dreams, these vivid dreams. Nothing more about the daughter. But, yeah. I mean, and, this, and she wrote a book on this, and I haven't opened it yet. And I, like I said, I got so much to go through. But, wow. And now this kind of shadow, I mean, what you spoke about, a lot of similarities, a lot of differences, but this stuff's all connected some ways. And that's why we get these stories. Like you talk about, I get them, you get them. Hey, you know, none of these things, people don't make this stuff up when they have these commonalities. That's why this data is so important. Mm -hmm. And to that, to this day, man, that, that, I wonder, I, I really wonder I think this does happen today now. I really do. I've, I've talked to too many people. You have. It's just fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing about the back of the neck, when her mother had that on the back of the neck, that's funny that you interjected with that. But but get this, and perfect timing. And folks, I promise you, me and Rob did not have this set up. This was not a plan. No, no, it was, you no. said that about the back of the neck. The, the implant that her mother got removed was actually not on the back of the neck. That was a nodule that they found on the back of the neck. That's not where the implant was. They thought that was because that's what the regressionist said that the implant was, but that's not correct. The guy that actually did the implant removal said that her mother's was actually on her foot. 
like in between her toes. So that was not where they found the whatever. So her mother, going by what you just said, and I, I, they didn't tell me that there was anything to this as far as like her mother having had a child, but that nodule was very weird to have that, you know. Um, and the guy that removed the implant actually said that, you know, that her mother may have been used too because of the information that he was given by the regressionist. Um, and But the mother was so drugged out. And I think, and this, I'm going to say this, and this isn't, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like say that people that are abductees are, are do, do drugs, but I think that right. some abductees, you know, not all abductees do drugs. Okay. And not all people that do drugs were abductees, but because I know a lot of people have been abducted. They've never done drugs. This woman, Alicia never did drugs. Um, but some of them, I think that, that have gone through some serious trauma. Um, they mask it and they cover it up by, by doing drugs and drinking a lot because then they don't have to deal with what happened to them and they don't ever have to really face reality. And so they can continue to live in sort of a dreamlike state in this reality. Yes. And yeah. And so when they plug into the hyper real, which is what I call it's my own name for it, hyper reality that then, then they they're facing it uh, on narcotics, whatever. Yeah. And I, and I agree with that statement, too. And again, I don't suggest it either. You know, it's unfortunate that we have drug abuse going on in the world. And people are addicted and all that. And uh, certainly the person I spoke was not an addict or not addicted to any drugs whatsoever. But I do find, though, that people that are heavy uses, usage, that are heavy users of drugs or perhaps alcohol or any substance. Do you think, Josh, though, that that it also lets these things in very easy. You know, if you, if you're sober mind and body and soul, it might be, and you believe in whatever you, your beliefs are. I think a lot of these things perhaps don't enter you as easily as though if your mind is somewhere else. Any, do you think any credence to that? Do you think? Yeah. I mean, you know, there, 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 there was someone that I did talk to who was an abductee and it was to the point where, and they were from Florida. Um, and get this, I believe that it may have been someone who was being abducted around the time of the Gulf Breeze sightings. And this person is an older person. And the whole time that I was talking to them, they were drinking. And I did not realize this until finally he passed. <laughs> not funny. I'm not trying to laugh, but he passed out and his daughter took over and said, look, my dad drinks a lot and he's he's asleep now. Can you call back tomorrow? And um, when I tried calling back the next day, I got him and he was – the poor guy, though, he, like, admitted to me. He admitted to me. He says, look, man, I'll be real honest with you, dude. He goes, I'm an alcoholic. He's mm -hmm. like, but I'm telling you the truth. And I said, I, I, I believe you. I get it. But, yeah, I, you know, I couldn't use this information because, oh, I mean, yeah, the guy right. was, you know, so – I mean, I wasn't – you know, and, 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 and he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Um, I'll call him Kay. Kay is a very nice guy, but he he did admit to me that. And that's not the first time or last time I had somebody who gave me a story about at multiple dogman encounters. And I believe the guy. I do believe him. But he admitted to me that he was an alcoholic. And I had actually sent him a book. And um, sadly, his wife reported to me that he couldn't even read it because he was so far advanced um, as an alcoholic that he was already suffering from cirrhosis. Um, but that's unfortunate because his story was pretty compelling. I would have loved to have him come on the show and tell his encounters himself, which he was willing to do. But that was the problem that he did that. And but here's the thing about that situation: I can talk about that and what he told me. Now you got to take it with a grain of salt too. And I right. preface it with he was an alcoholic. But I believe, and this is something I actually talked to Jody Cook about because he and I had done a lot of looking into. Um, the dog man phenomena actually stemming from alien abduction. And I know that sounds crazy, but you remember Rob, when me and Barton Nunley talked to you, you were like, I think interview number four or something like that. And, um, or no, no, that was Jesus Payan. You were, I think you were number two. Uh, but the first five people we interviewed about Bigfoot right. were abductees and had had situations where there were abductees. So, there were only three of y'all that weren't abductees, which was very odd. It was like you, Daryl Denton, and one and one other person. Um, so it was it was so uh, uh, 
compelling to me. And, and, and so it really pushed me and Barton both to kind of start delving into the alien abduction scenarios. And it taught, and it, it caused me to spend a lot more time talking to Nick Redford. Uh, and then ultimately led to, hey, let's do a project together. And that's how this show came to be on the Saturday. It was actually the brainchild between me, Barton, and Nick talking about, hey, let's do an alien abduction show on Saturdays. And then, of course, everything kind of, you know, Barton got real busy and his show blew up, started doing better. And uh, so then Nick ends up going back to England. And uh, we also had another project we were working on together. Uh, and it was about the MK Ultra, and so right. that kind of got shelved because of a witness that I tried to get to talk. And Garitana was a consultant on that, and we couldn't get this person to say they were just like, "No, I'm not going to talk about it." Terrifying stuff, right? Um, and then the exposure of the people, uh, like in Garitano has talked about this, the Montauk people that were exposed to the aliens, the aliens as they call them you can call them whatever you want interdimensionals i call them demonic uh, shape-shifting bastards but that's just my term for them um <laughs> other people can call them what they want friendly space brothers i'm not into that term because i don't believe it. i don't believe it just like right. people when yeah. they talk yeah. about the bigfoot they're like oh yeah, yeah. it's a friendly giant out there it's no like, it's not it's just not the friendly force giant. i don't believe that either um but that's my opinion on these things but so we were talking about this whole thing, and, and the, the exposure from these beings was one of the most, even with the, the, uh, the torture that was going on, the aliens themselves just being around the humans and, and being on this weird vibration that that believe that they exist on destabilizes you as a human being, and it does something to your insides. And that's yeah. my opinion. I believe that that's the truth. I believe that it's sort of like the infrasound because everything is light and sound. Well, really, it is. Yeah, you know, I believe there's something to that. And you know the story. I'm not going to tell my story. But you know what happened to my girlfriend at the time, Cindy. We got that roar, that blast, mm -hmm. that sound just emanated across the lake. It hit us. Everything turned dull, black and white. I thought I was, I got paralyzed. Everything went black and white. And I, was, and I couldn't move. Cindy fell off the boat. Because we got hit with this, like a sonic shockwave. And and then as people know the rest of the story, Cindy was about 5'1", 110 pounds, 109 pounds. Two months later, she died. Yeah. And I always thought that it was something to do with that, that blast. You know, I don't think that was no infrasound, maybe ultrasound. It was something more powerful i think because and again i'm not an expert i'm not a scientist i couldn't tell you the difference between ultrasound and infrasound but it was something for a young lady to pass on because of a heart attack which i was told in the autopsy i never had a chance to get the records as i told you before blah 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 her mom hated me <laughs> so i i wasn't even allowed to the funeral so that today is always a mystery but i did talk to a psychic about two weeks ago it was suggested to me and I have an open mind to these things. I've, sp I've spoken with two within the last several months. And one person said that during this encounter that I had with Cindy in Cadillac, Michigan, is that this, this is, I'm not against both of the psychics analysis, but I'll just give you one of them, which I think to be more cre uh, credible or relevant, is that there was a Bigfoot, a hybrid type of Bigfoot that came down from the iron and ore mines of the upper peninsula because where i was in cadillac was about 100 miles south of there now that area is very sparsely populated not many people live there yes and and i'm like what okay i know there's those mines are out there but the person went on to tell me that it wasn't and i always say it was a demon I don't know that it's a demon today but I always said that, and the psychic had told me it wasn't a demon. However, that it was traversing about the minefields of the UP, the Upper Peninsula, for those who don't know, traversing south, but it slipped into a portal. It slipped into a portal on my side in Cadillac, and when it emerged, it didn't know where it was. It was taken aback, just like I was taken aback by seeing it, and it got scared, and it just immediately roared. 
And for people who didn't hear my story, it looked like a humanoid, then it turned into what I would call a demon. And that was him being scared or it, the creature being scared is what emanated that roar, that sonic boom, as I say. And apparently, according to the psychic person, had nothing to do with the death of my girlfriend. Went on to say a bunch of other things why she thought she died, but I don't want to get into that. It's kind of, I don't, it's kind of out there. So perhaps that's uh, another chapter to my story, which to me, that book is still open. And it always will be. I mean, that's the thing. It's really hard to ever get a definitive answer on a lot of this stuff. Like just my, like my main encounter, I've had multiple encounters with different types of entities, I believe. But uh, the main one that kind of jump started it all, I guess, would be the dog man creature, 15 years old, werewolf, whatever you want to call it. To this day, I still don't have the answers to it. I've been looking for it. I did have uh, someone who's psychic reach out to me. Um, but you probably, you probably know who they are. Um, and I, and I, they have been, uh, how do you say this, um, embattled, you know, over the years with different people. And so there are people who have strong opinions about this person. But anyway, especially in the ghost community, so I'm not going to get into it. But they they had messaged me, and so I talked to them, and she was very upfront about it and said, look, you know, <clears throat> did not ask this. I did not ask this, and I've had a few people remote view my encounter and they all kind of tell me the same thing. But she says, look, I looked into your encounter and she told me that it was a person, that it was a being, a human being. Um, and so one of the things that she told me, though, too, that I would never, ever be able to fully find the truth, that I'm just going to keep looking. But the reason that I was able to see this thing and why it was there, according to what this person said, was so that I would go down this path. And that I could be led to this path and begin to do what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. according to this person, I was going to be constantly harassed by a spirit. Now, here's the interesting thing. She said that I was going to be harassed by a spirit. So I asked her, and I took it with a grain of salt. And I said, well, okay, a spirit is in what? And she said, well, there's a spirit that is attached to this. And it's not just one spirit, but there is an overall spirit that kind of is manipulating and trying to stop the truth. And that spirit will send other spirits like, like smaller parts of itself. You know what I mean? Like it's like part of this black hole goo thing, whatever. And it can break off and make its own, whatever minions. And they will continue to harass you the whole time you were. And you know, so I, I, you know, this was early on too. This was like in 2019. And uh, so I've always kind of wondered about that and thought maybe that there is something to what she said. Um, and she wasn't real vague either. It wasn't like she was just like, oh, well, there's this and that, you know. No, it was – she was pretty pretty adamant that this was going to be the way it was until eventually there was going to come a point when I couldn't be touched or messed with, you know. But, in, in, you know, and so I, I always look back at that and I think <sighs> – you know, that was uh, about four months after I started. Um, yeah, because it was like in August, almost September, their Labor Day. I remember that. And I just thought about that, you know, and I was thinking, you know, and then when I had announced the conference that we were going to do it on Labor Day weekend, I, I hadn't heard from this person in a long time. And she messaged me and she said, that's not a coincidence because that was when she had told me about it, you know. Yeah. It was right around Labor Day. But anyway, long story short, the, the point is, that I was told by a psychic, you know, that this, and, and she's been pretty spot on. There are some people that claim that this person is not credible, whatever, but there, there was because there was some infighting or whatever, but this person also claims that, and hopefully they don't get upset me saying this, but that, yeah. you know, that their problems with other people in the, the community, or whatever, were because of jealousy and this and that. Now, th those people claim it's money and who knows, but you know, as you know, as well as I do. Right. If people talk about the cryptid community. I don't even know what that is. I don't acknowledge that. I really don't yeah. know what that is. I'm not a part of no cryptid community. Yeah, I think uh, that's something. There is no cryptid away. community. It's just it's just a term, you know, but like the ghost community. They have yeah. their own term for that. And then the Bigfoot community, the dogman community, yeah. the UFO community. Really and truly, I'm not. And I think one of the problems for me is that I'm a part of all of it. I do all of it. If you look at my logo right there, there's this alien yeah. craft right there, you know. 
Yeah. So it's going to keep happening because people aren't going to like that you step on their toes and you talk about things that they think that they should monopolize or whatever. Um, and there's always going to be disinformation agents out there. Now, I've had pe I've heard people say, well, I've never met one. How would you know if you met one or not? You wouldn't know. Um, they tend to be people, though, that stir up trouble and will go from person to person doing what they do. And so that's the only way to know to say, hey, well, that person's always going back and forth between some people. So that yeah. they could be a disinformation agent. Now, um, we don't know. We, now, I know at my first conference, uh, th there was a person that came to me and it was, uh, I don't want to say her name. I mean, she, she's a really nice, but her husband was on my show. Let's say that. And she came to me and she said, there were two guys there at your conference. This is the first conference. She said they were disinformation agents. One of them was a tall guy, you know, whatever. And she described him. And I thought I knew who he was, but the other one, I wasn't sure. Now, weird thing is another big name podcaster that was at my conference. Um, and there were a few, um, but these guys are pretty big names. And one of their friends came to me and said, hey, that person there is a show. And it fit the description of this other person whose husband was on my show. And I was like, and I noticed they just stood there by themselves, just kind of observing, watching, watching, didn't buy anything from any of the vendors, didn't really mingle, just kind of watched. And then eventually they left. And when I noticed this, when they left, and this was told to me by Starscream, who was my security, who was on the show just uh, last uh, Saturday, he said that they left in the same vehicle together. Although when they were inside the building, Rob, they did not communicate mm -hmm. at all. Right. So mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. I said, "What do you? Did you see these two guys?" And I said, "Then if you see them, let me know what they look like when they leave." And he and then he reported back to me, "Oh, they left together." So there you go. I mean, it could be something. It might not. Who knows? But there are people who I believe are sent into our so-called community, and they're just there to observe, report. And then again, they cause problems and they could even be on some kind of shadow payroll. And I know that sounds so crazy and conspiratorial, but we're sitting here talking about mantis alien beings. So it can't be any more crazy than that. Than people no, have I mean, you know, alien, uh, alien hybrid babies. I mean, from human women. You know, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, but you know, and, but I agree with you about the community thing. I, I you could, take that word and do away with it all the things i talk about much like you it's cryptids paranormal ghosts aliens so to me it's all paranormal i'm not it in the is, yeah. i'm not in paper camp i mean i think some of them physical but here's the thing and even when i started you know in 20 about the site going back to the psychic thing really like i talked to two of them in 2018 when i had my encounter i had no plans of creating a youtube show and you know I did a video and someone suggested to me to just make a video because I was so dark and such a, in a deep spot with the loss of my girlfriend, this thing I saw. And I was a, one of the best therapies is speaking about it. I didn't have a YouTube channel. I didn't have a YouTube handle. I never went in chat rooms, Josh. So I just said, well, I got to make this video. How do I name it? So I, I saw a Bigfoot, I guess. My name is Rob. I live in Michigan. So the Bigfoot Mission Rob handle was formulated, and that which turned into my channel. And then last year when I told my audience, hey, I'm going to change the name of Bigfoot Mission Rob because I do more than Bigfoot. No, 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 no. Just keep it that. We, we get you. We get you. So I haven't changed the name. I'm, it's, you know, I've been doing this for three years. So that's going to stay. Stay. But the parent, the psychic did tell me this. The reason you do what you do today is because of what happened to you in 2018. That's why you have a show. That's why you wrote a book. That's why you have friends now that are in this quote unquote community. And so when I look back in retrospect, she was probably right because I always tell the people I do it for them to help them get through whatever stress or PR, you know, PTSD that they might have had, much like I did. You were going to say PRT. Yeah, I was. PRT yeah, you, yeah. you know, PRT gives me PTSD some it's nights. Pretty I righteous tell you. time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, but yeah, so that's why that's why I'm here today. And uh, it's just so many stories, man. And uh, you do a fantastic job with what you do. And I, you fully got my support. <laughs> Well, you know, you you were when you and I first started talking, we became fast friends. And 
I could tell that you were an intelligent guy. And of course we both had a lot of common interests. It helps. We both like football and yeah. stuff like that. And we, we, we keep, we keep up with it. You and me. And I guess Chris Kramer who liked him and Shane, Michael, Chris, would like to needle me all year because one of them is an Eagle fan. Oh. You're a Lions fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. And of course, Shane's a 49er fan. So, you know, we go round and round picking on each other because all four of those teams were in the thick of it until yeah. the Cowboys and the Eagles just self-destructed. I mean, you know, uh, yes. well-deserved, though. I'll just say that. The Lions, I really was pulling for them hardcore, man. I wanted them to win that game so bad. Yeah, um, you know, I did. And I, it I did, believe it or not, and I'm not just saying this because you're my friend in Tex, of course, from Texas. <laughs> I kind of was always drawn to the Cowboys, you know, America's team, I guess you guys say, but I always, I do kind of, that's like my second team. Uh, well, I'll tell Chris, but I tell Chris and Brandy, the Chiefs are my second team. So it flip flops, depending <laughs> who I talk to. I used to like the Chiefs until so they started winning all the damn time. And now I'm like, come on. Get yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, you know? they're back in the Super Bowl again. Yeah. You're like, come on, man. I'm getting tired yeah. of it. You know, let someone else do it. But yeah. Uh, William Bedard says on here, he says, great guest, Josh. Explain stories very well. What is his channel? Do you want to tell him your channel? Oh, yeah. My channel is Bigfoot Mission Rob. Uh, found on YouTube. Yeah. Just type in Bigfoot Mission Rob uh, on your YouTube browser. Or uh, if there's a link out there, just uh, hit the link. Yeah. yeah so I'm, on twice, I'm on twice a week. I'm on Tuesday Thursday. nights at 9, Thursday afternoon at 1. And tonight at midnight, my time, 11 Central, me and Krista are breaking down a story that I released earlier. It's very fascinating. I don't want to give out too much detail. It's a 10 miles north, south of Skinwalker Ranch about these these orbs that haunted this couple for 15 years that turned into these creatures which follow them back to Idaho. And that's all I'm going to say on that. I dropped that video earlier today, but Krista and I are going to break it down. And hell, Josh, if you're up, you know, come on over if you want. So Sure. The, well, I don't want to take away or anything because people accuse me of that they're like he takes over your show blah, blah, blah. and i do because i talk too much you do like well i can just tell the story chris and i we'll just give our opinions on it it's up to you i'll, I'll send you the link later sure yeah i might do that um so deadpool kid i wanted to apologize to you for earlier that you got taken and put in time out i don't know who did that i don't know why they do that i think it's scorpion because scorpion's got a bad habit and then he's like oh dude i fell asleep dude <laughs> he's moderating but bless his heart he works like long hours when he has to work a shift over there and you got to remember too he's, he's he's pulling a story for me as we speak because he has inter he's been interviewing i don't know if you know about this rob a group of homeless people because we have a big problem here in, in austin's really really bad for it okay that they are supposedly they have they they've been in a war with another group of homeless people who are cannibals and so these people are hyper aggressive and, and they, they use that as an excuse. I don't know what their real excuse is, but these cannibals have kind of pushed them, according to them, they've pushed them out of their area into our, and that's why they're butted up against our properties because there's another group out there that are really bad. And I can attest to how violent the aggressive these, these, this group is, not the cannibals, but the ones that are claiming this. Because I've interacted with a few of them, and they were ready to fight real quick. And it's weird because they use rudimentary weapons like, you know, spears and things like that. Um, and luckily, nobody's been hurt or killed yet, but they've thrown them at us. Uh, so, yeah, dude, I mean, it's like Lord of the Flies over here. I'm just you – know, I'm not joking. I'm being darn serious, man. Uh, I've so, heard yeah, that, that it's a creepy – it can be creepy at night where you live. There's certain areas, not where you live per se, but – yeah, in Austin. Stony, yeah. Because mm -hmm. because everything, it's built into a big arboreal forest. So there's a lot of places for people and things to hide. And you could yeah. be in the middle of the city and there's huge forests. And Houston's the same way. Not so much Dallas. Dallas and Fort Worth are pretty cut and dry. And they're sort of flat, you know, and it's not real. But uh, Houston and, and Austin and San Antonio are built into forests. It's very heavily forested. And uh, when Barton and his wife are here, and of course, Bettina and Maddie, everybody who's come down and driven around and we've showed them some spots, you know, uh, well, you could probably ask uh, Blondes and Boos, they can tell you. Austin is heavily wooded, very heavily wooded. And so 
there's a ton of places that people can hide. And of course, I took Barton and Letitia out to different places. And I said, look at all these, look at all these woods. I mean, you, there's, they're right in the middle of the city. So that's why the homeless are so, uh, you know, they, they have places to hide. And we get some really wacky stories from people who were once homeless or are still homeless. And my guards have been like here lately, they've been fielding some very odd reports uh, mm -hmm. from, from, from some of the sites we have, but, uh, let me get refocused here and let me, let's talk about this case. So what ended up happening with Alicia? Um, she ended up like having this, uh, situation, uh, where they, they removed the implants and the guy was very freaked out because he said that different races of beings will track him because he's the one removing them. Mm -hmm. Now he went on to tell her and her boyfriend a, a crazy story about uh, two reptilians that actually broke into his house looking for an abductee. And he showed them pieces of furniture in the walls where they had been clawed and messed up. And he told them, he said, you know, they broke into my house. Now get this. This is where it gets even juicier. He said, but I had a surprise for them. And at this point, when she's telling me this, I'm thinking, okay, let me guess, you had a shotgun and you blew them away and they, blah, 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 you know, and he goes, no, <laughs> she goes, she goes, no, it's not what he told me. He told her, get this, Rob, and this yeah. is the coup de grace of this story here. This is where it really drives it home, that he was a shaman oh. and that he was fourth generation alien, that his grand, great, whatever, grandmother, whatever, had been impregnated by uh, a reptilian long time ago and that he sometimes his eyes would slit up and they and then he proceeded to show them how he could do it because he learned how to shapeshift mm -hmm. and through shamanism the practice of ingesting certain things he could actually shapeshift into what some people would call a werewolf right so when these supposed reptilians which he called them rep mercs which I've heard this term before, these rep mercs came into his house looking for what he had, was supposed to be there, whatever. And he said that there were different types. Some of the reptilians worked as mercenaries, much like the greys, who were, I believe, are like biological robots. And then some of them are really, really bad, and they're the ones doing it themselves. And he said that those particular ones from the inner earth are really, really bad because they look at humans as their property. This is their world we're here to serve them. We are here to be slaves. And they don't look at people as anything other than commodities. Now, he said the mercs tend to be from interdimensional, from another place, whatever. They just do what they're told. They're, they're, they're just getting paid, basically. Sort of like bounty hunters. They showed up, and he says, I had a surprise for them. And he goes, and I was in the middle of meditating, and I shapeshifted. And he didn't say into what. And I guess they didn't ask. but he attacked them and he showed them something that freaked her out. Now she said, she goes, I'm going to tell you something, Mr. Turner. So I, I hate when people call me that, but that's, she, and I kept telling her, call me Wolf. And she's like, well, I don't feel comfortable calling you Wolf. And, and she's like, I'll call you Josh. I said, well, call me Josh, whatever. But then she kept calling me Mr. Turner. But anyway, she said, Mr. Turner, I'm going to tell you something. She goes, he showed me two claws still attached to the phalanges. Oh, wow. And she said, and they looked like lizard claws, large, like something that belonged to Jurassic Park. And so she, she, you know, she was telling me this, and she was very adamant that this was the truth. Now, to drive the point home, she had her boyfriend email me, and I read it, and I let a couple people from my team and take a look. What do you think of this? You think this is real, whatever. Um, so then we sat down, and we had a, co a phone conference with her, you know, and it was... Uh, she said, she goes, y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but I'm not. She goes, this is a real deal. She goes, this guy showed me claws of what he called reptilian mercs. And even talked about the place where they came from and how they would st step in and out of these stargates. And that there was one between two trees right there in his whatever. That he had to close it down. It was like a portal. Or it was a portal. And she said that when we walked outside, she goes, I felt this static electricity energy. She says, and when my boyfriend put his hand on my back, we both got shocked. And he said, see, I'll tell you, he goes, that energy is right here. It's right there. So 
he gave them all kinds of like remedies and things that they could do to keep them away. It was very interesting because in the chat right here, and I thought it was really, really good timing too. Um, impromptu truth, truth and bass. Like I was just talking about them earlier. They're twins. They're abductees. Mm -hmm. They've been on my show. They have a show called impromptu truth mm -hmm. and truth. And them at my first conference, they were there and they showed us their implants where they were on their legs. Very wild. But here's the thing. Truth said that there was a story that he got from somebody who was standing in line at a Walmart, right? And that this person, they, they had like snake repellent and the person behind them began to shift. Mm. Yeah. See, weird stuff like that happens all the time. <laughs> you know, I mean, it is very bizarre. Here's another thing. I've heard this before. There is a type of shark repellent. Get this. This is the truth. And I'm telling you, folks, I'm not making this up. A friend of mine is, is a, is, was a Navy SEAL, and he used to do Japanese skin diving. I don't know if you know what that is. But he, they can literally hold their breath for like five minutes. Now, I've gotten where I can hold my breath for over three. That's something. But five minutes, that's a lot. And they said that usually five, six minutes at the most they can do. People have been able to do that. And this guy said that the, the sharks in the reef were really bad in this one area. So one of the things he learned, sharks don't like crocodiles. And it's something that goes back millions of years. That's what people say, okay? Um, and it's something that's ingrained in them. So there are bull sharks that literally share territory, like in Australia and in the Zambezi River in Africa, with crocodiles. And these people who've had problems with these bull sharks, they have used crocodile uh, pheromone to get these bull sharks away from them. So they showed a video. I was watching it on Discovery Channel, and they literally, I think it was Shark Week, actually. I'm pretty sure it was. And they were literally, they just sprayed some into the water and the sharks take off real fast because they don't want none of that croc. They don't want to mess with them. The bull sharks now, they'll they'll encounter each other. And if the croc is smaller, the bull shark wins. If the, bull, if the, if the croc is bigger, the bull shark loses. Simple as that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of size. Typically, the crocs, though, once they get to a certain point, the bull shark only goes to a certain point, and that's it. The croc keeps, he's big. He becomes a badass. And so those crocs will kill and eat those bull sharks. They don't care. And they're not, there's nothing in those rivers that really can stop them. Only in Africa where the hippo is there. Now, the hippo is probably my spirit animal because it's big and heavy and it <laughs> and it doesn't like crocs. So that's I'm on board with that. But what's crazy is everywhere else with where the brackish water is, whatever, where these saltwater crocodiles interact. So they, they use this repellent. So this guy tells me, he goes, dude, I had some of that repellent on me. Right. Now, this is a friend of my, my friend. My friend's a Navy SEAL. I've known him for years. But he his buddy, he, he was a skin diver. He said, look, his name is Barry. He's like, Barry told me, he's like, I had some of this repellent on me. He's like, and I get back up into the boat. And one of the guys that was with us was from Indonesia. And he goes, and when I got up, he was he began to gasp and choke. And he almost jumped into the water trying to get away from me. And I kept I walked over to him. I was like, you OK? And he just kept trying to get away from me, get away from me. He goes, and before our eyes, me and two of the other guys saw this dude, part of his face scale up and his eyes slid up. And he just like ran to the other side of the ship. Wow. And it was because of this crocodile pheromone that was on him. It was causing him to, to, to react. Now, he himself told them that he didn't understand why that was happening. He claims that he didn't know anything about it or why he looked that way and because he had to make an excuse. And the guy said, you know, the guys that were using this uh, repellent, which is bull shark repellent, but it's also works for other types of reef sharks, things like that. And he said that this guy reacted to it. And I thought that was interesting when, when, uh, when you know, Impromptu Truth said that about the snake repellent, because I have heard this before, you know, not with the yeah. snake repellent, but what, what I just was telling you about yeah. the crocodile pheromone. And so it's really weird because the only problem with using that, though, is if you're in an area where there's crocs, well, it attracts crocs, but it will get rid of the sharks. So that's a problem. You know? that's, that's a problem, I think. <laughs> it's a catch-22. You're either going to be eaten by the, by the shark know? or you're going to be eaten by the, you know, whatever. So 
Yeah, it, it's uh it's it's a crazy a crazy thing when you stop and you you think about these people, these shapeshifters or these beings, how they can be around you. Now, this guy that was a shaman that, that lived in Michigan in your home state, the guy told him, he said, Hey, you know, he said, uh, I can remove these implants and I'm not worried about these uh, reptilians that come or whatever. He's like, but I'd prefer not to deal with them. And there's certain ones he goes, I just will not deal with. And she asked him which ones. He described to a T what I would call the Dracos, which are the really big, strong, dragon-looking ones. Yeah. He said, there's nothing you can do. He's like, it doesn't matter. you know. And, and this guy was full on board with Dogman. Like, he understood all about that. And she was like, she's a, he's a very interesting guy. You might want to interview him or whatever, but he's a very reclusive dude. So she gave me a contact information. I tried to reach out to him. To this day, he has not reached out back out to me. No surprise, because he probably thinks I'm some government agent or something or whatever, because people that live like that, they typically don't want to talk to people unless they're sent by somebody. And so he didn't respond back to me. Maybe someday he will. That'd be cool. You know, I don't I know he probably doesn't watch my show, but if you do, I'd like to talk to you, sir. Um, the thing is, he he was full on board with it. He was talking about how he had seen uh, werewolf looking creatures and how. Their genetics actually were, were another thing. It was like a hybrid of something that was the, the product of genetic tampering between these aliens that did this project with these wolves and these humans. And it was something that was done like 200,000 years ago, according to this guy. Now, that sounds like some guy who's just talking out of his rear end until you realize that multiple people have said this before. And like I said, uh, Jody Cook in particular, he was a guy, he's a, he's a guy in this community that uh, in the paranormal whatever community, he's been in the UFO field and he's been in the Dogman field and he's the head of the NADP, the North American Dogman Project. And they have literally a huge catalog, thousands of accounts of these things. They have a huge library, a huge catalog. Um, and, and along with uh, uh, the IDP too, they, uh, they kind of split and they, they kind of went their separate ways. But if you look at the the uh, amount of material that we've gotten, and of course Jody's been on the show, go back and look at those episodes, <clears throat> and he talks about these beings. Like he was, he's he's talked to people who claim that they were interdimensional uh, aliens or whatever you want to call them, and that's what their origin is. At least I had suspected that before, and I had used the term Anunnaki, which apparently. Really sent one guy into a rage. Yeah, I, I hear it about that. A frenzy, <laughs> a frenzied rage. A frenzied rage. He becomes a whoa, yeah, you know. Like, it's it's just a word. It's <laughs> just a word. Uh, but apparently it triggers him into becoming a reptilian or something. <laughs> well, okay, now I'll give him a pass on that one. He, okay. <laughs> so you know? so he becomes very enraged at the at the idea that the Anunnaki, whatever, but I've said this before. If they were somebody who was here and they tampered with our genetics or whatever, the dog man could have been the guy that kept the the the, the portal, the Stargate. Now, I had a guy who was in Iraq, and he told me, point blank, he told us, he said, look, I saw these beings, these reptilian-looking beings come out of a portal, like literally uh, Draco-looking beings, tall, big, large, dragon-like, and there were these dog men who were on either side of this portal. And he said that when you look at these beings, he said that the dog man obviously were there as some sort of guardian or protector. Now, me and my team have actually done some work and we've been on location to a few of these different places. And one of them was a campus of a humongous uh, computer company. I'm not going to say which one because I don't want a problem yeah. with them. But uh, let's just say that everybody knows the name of it. I guarantee it. I promise you, you do. And they, the, the head of security there, uh, introduced us to some of the people that worked there. And one of my friends actually worked there and got on the show and talked about seeing one of these in an elevator. A man that was a reptilian that changed. And he saw him in the elevator mirror and was like, oh crap, you know. And it was when the big shots had come down from, from Europe. Now, typically, um, these, and I've been to four different campuses of four different companies. And I talked to a friend of mine who even worked for a stockbroker uh, uh, company, whatever, who also said the same thing. Uh, that was most recently. Um, and he said that, that these, these beings, these people, whatever you want to call them, they come from Europe or Asia, typically. And when they do, people see them 
like their faces will because they're under high stress or whatever. And they'll look reptilian or their eyes will slit up or they'll see scales. And at the same time that all this is going on, people are seeing these dogman looking creatures running around outside. When most of these campuses, in fact, no, all of them have woods around them all. They all have woods around them, which is kind of weird. Like, what's the point of it? Why do you need to have that? None of them are just like right down the middle of the city. They're all on the outskirts out here where there's a lot of woods. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. But if you were a betting man, you would say, I bet you that these reptilian people, beings, whatever, they come and they bring their pet dogmen, which are probably people that shapeshift into that and they're guardians and they're there protecting them. One in particular used to live really close to where I used to live, in a, in an apartment I had. And I was next door to a campus, one of these campuses, a very large company that I'm sure everyone's heard of, a different one. And these people, they were from India and they lived above us. And they told my brother, my brother got me in touch with them and said, hey, you need to talk to these guys. They got some information. And they told me that one of these big shots who had come from India had literally been seen walking around with a cloak and that his face looked lizard-like and he was literally putting skin on his face in the restroom. Oh, wow. Yeah. And these guys said, hey, hey, we, we, we didn't see this, but we heard this. But one of them said, hey, I saw this white wolf-like creature that looked like something crawling around. And then when it put its, what it looked like arms up on a tree, it became a wolf. And he goes, and it was like, it had these elongated limbs and this really big head. And he's like, but it looked so unnatural. He goes, and I said, so what do you think it was? He goes, damn, I don't know, like a werewolf? I mean, I don't know. He goes, I just saw it. And then he goes, about five minutes later, the guy that everybody was saying was a reptoid came out of the building and was like, okay, you have a good night, and went to his, his vehicle. Wow. And then the guards there, I interviewed one of them because I seen him driving his vehicle around all the time, and I just pulled in, started up a conversation with him. And I said, how long have you been working here? And he said, four years. And we became good friends just by, you know, by talking. And, I, and so I just talked to him a few times. I'd see him and, you know, and I gave him my card. And I said, well, you know, I have a company. If you ever want extra hours or whatever, I can't match what they pay you. But if you want part time, because he said they were cutting his hours. I said, come on, I'll give you a couple of chips. So me and the guy became friends. He worked for me for a couple, couple of years off and on. This guy told me, this was back in like 2015 or 16. He told me, he said, look, he goes, I, when I questioned him one night on post, he said, I've seen some weird stuff that I'd rather not talk about. He's like, cause I still work for that company. He's an in-house security guard. He goes, but I can say this. You, when I told him what I knew, he said, you're on the right track. He's like, I don't know exactly what I saw. He goes, but when these people would come, these big shots, he's like, I would see them and they looked. It looked weird. He's like, they don't, they didn't look, you know, like normal people. He's like, and in fact, one of my guards claimed that he saw one of them moving his skin around. So he didn't see them reptilian changing or anything like that. Yeah. He it's did pretty verify pretty. that one of his guards had seen that. So it's just his covering, right? His covering. Yeah, like they're just looking yeah. like it's a fake like face. A or fake face. I, I got a comment on that really quick, and this was kind of impromptu to jump on with. You'll have to do this again. I, I got a show in an hour, and I, I got my mom. It's, it's nobody's business, really, but my mom, uh, she, I, I moved my mom into my house about five years ago after my dad passed. It was a family decision, so I got to check on her in a little bit before I get started a little later in 40 minutes, so I appreciate coming on. But I was going to ask you, I think we were talking about these hybrid aliens, and, and now we're talking about dog man and everything else in between. Do you even think though that, and this is, might be longer than an hour question, but I, I'll just leave it at this. I think that a lot of these hybrids could be a, a accumulation of alien dog man, all this stuff. They could, who knows dog man today. I have different thoughts. Maybe they are from a different planet or different world. Maybe they are hybrid from an alien. I don't know. Maybe they come from inner earth. It's just such a fascinating subject. And I think at the end of May, you're coming on to talk a little inner earth. I don't know if we confirm mm -hmm. that, but yeah, that'd be fine. a great what, show. What, uh, let me know what day, because I think I'm going to the LBL at the end of the month, but yeah. for sure, yeah. Yeah, so we can do that. And uh, this is fun. I, I, I'd i like to stay until my show starts, but I got to do the thing with my mom really quick, and it's I don't want to get yeah, into man. it. Mothers are precious, dude. Stuff. You're lucky yes, to still I, have yours. I, I still got her, and uh, she's good people. I love her. So, yeah, I got to take care of that, and 
Thanks for those out there to subscribe to my channel, Bigfoot Mystery Rob, on YouTube. If you did, thanks. Uh, tonight, uh, after Josh, in about 40 minutes, I'll be out with Krista. We got a cool show lined up. And Josh, I'll send you a link. No obligation. If you want to come on, you can. If you want to watch, watch. Sure. Whatever. With that being said, man, I do got to I gotta bust out of here. All right. I'll see you, Rob. Peace. All right. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. So, Bigfoot Michigan Rob, good friend of mine. Uh, like I said, you know, me and Barton, we interviewed him. And um, I talk to him pretty regularly. And, like, there's a lot of people in this field that I, I talk to pretty regularly. Um, but he's definitely a really good friend and got a lot of information. Go check his show out, dude. He does a really good job. He does a great job. And let me tell you, I am super duper impressed and excited for Blondes and Booze. I think them and Tex and BMR are headed for big things. And we all know Barton and Matt Imsch, they're doing great things too. And I try to work around all their schedules. And Bettina's another one too. I try to, we all try to coordinate so we don't step on each other's toes. But occasionally it does happen. But I don't want to be accused of being a bully and being like, oh, I'm just going to take over the whatever. I'm not that guy. I promise you, I'm not that guy. And I'm not as bad as these crazy people are trying to make me out to be. I promise you, I am not. All I am is a simple dude. Well, I'm not simple, but I try to be as simple as possible, as forthcoming as possible with the information that I get and to give you the stories. And I work hard. I promise you, I bust my ass. And I'm sorry for saying the word ass. I do cuss every now and then. I'm not perfect. I'm no saint. But I do try to do what's right, and I do. I, I am trying to bring you the best uh, that I possibly can. Tonight was today was horrible. I had a very horrible day, and I know you don't want to hear about it, so I'm not going to burden you with it. But suffice it to say that we were being messed with, you know, and trolled by people, and then you know, and then there's people over there going, "Well, oh, I'm not about this drama, and this person is a good person, and I've always liked this person." Yeah, well, why are they messing with us? It's a simple question. All they got to do is go away, leave us alone, and we're fine. And we're fine, right? And the community or whatever can be at peace. Um, that's it. They don't have to like me. They don't have to support me. But dang it, you don't have to attack me. You can just leave me alone and leave my family alone and leave everybody alone. But I honestly, and I'm not giving these people an out, believe me. Um, but I do believe that that psychic may have been onto something. Maybe it was just a, a, a very serious observation on her part. Or maybe she really was on to something and she was looking at something from a psychic uh, standpoint. But she's been right. I've never had a moment's peace since I've been in this field. I, I came into this field and I was like, I was watching all these wars go on. This was going on before I showed up. Um, and I was just like, this is crazy. And nobody prepared me for this. Nobody prepared me for this. Um, but, you know, I have a really good friend who does a show too. And I like, I, I don't want to, uh, you know... Uh, say too much, whatever. But uh, he's got a show, and he told me he said he was friends with the late Kerry Arnold, and Kerry Arnold said it best. He says everybody in this field is in a clique, and you can compare them to gangs. And he told him, he said you're going to have to maneuver through that, and you can't be everybody's friend. It just doesn't work. We tried it here at PRT because I came into this. Bright eyed and bushy tailed, and I thought, I'm going to work with everyone, and we're all going to be friends, and I'm just going to bring everybody together, and we're all going to get along. And guess what? I learned real quick that is not the case. And it seems like the closer you get to answers and the truth, the more people come at you, want to smash you, and try to bring you down. You can't let that happen. You just got to keep going. You get up here in front of the camera, you tell people what needs to be said. You bring them the stories, you bring them the cases, you tell them what needs to be done, and that's it. That's you go on. And then you're still going to get attacked. It doesn't matter if you get up to a certain point, you will be. It's just on how you handle it. So what I've decided to do is not going to even talk about it on our show. If I have to make a live stream like I did yesterday early during the day, that's where that's going to happen. It's not going to happen when we're talking about this. And so I'm not giving you any more oxygen, folks. We're moving on, right? So let's all just like work together. Let's try to make this an actual community because it doesn't exist the way they say it does. But we're trying to make that happen, right? So we're going to try and bring everybody together. And even if the people you talk to, the guy or gal sitting next to you doesn't agree with you and they don't have the same view as you, whether it's religiously, politic, spiritually, or whether they believe that, that you know, Bigfoot and Dogman are from the planet Zeptune 9. It doesn't matter. 
Okay, that's their opinion and their belief. You don't have to share it. You don't have to have the same opinion or belief. But dang, you don't got to go and attack them and hit them over the head with the club because they don't believe like you. And, and when people have something that they've worked really hard for and they're proud of it and they want to share it with people, don't try to destroy it. Just let them have it. I don't understand that mentality. I really don't. Because when I see my peers and my friends doing very well, you the true paratroopers, the people that know me and know my family and know how we are, we are very happy for them and we applaud them and we cheer them on. And when these people say things like, oh, we were trying to take people out of their chat, that nothing could be further from the truth. When my friend Matt Imsch hit 10,000, I was excited. Now, I'll tell you what was, what was, I was actually in the restroom when he, when I, when I was watching and I was like, oh, good for him, you know? Um, and then I was told that we were trying to take people out to go to a live stream that I was not on. When he hit 10,000, I was in the restroom watching. I told Matt that. And Matt knows. And I said, look, nothing could have made me happier than to see him hit that mark. And I want to see BMR hit that mark. I want to see Barton Nunley hit that mark. I want to see Blondes and Booze hit that mark. I want to see Tex hit that mark. I want to see Danielle hit that mark. I want to see all of my friends do well. I want to see Tony Merkel's numbers go through the roof and become a household name. I want to see Josh Nokio fly to the moon and become as big as Elon Musk. I want to see Chris Garitano make the best movies that have ever been made. And all of my friends that do this work, my friend Eric Palazzo's at Media Palace, I hope that he does great. And I don't care if all these people supersede, super, and they pass me by and their way to the moon, I hope them for the best. And I really believe that my hand to God, the Bible, I cheer and root for people because if they're doing well, I'm doing well because I'm associated with them and we're friends. And I hope Lyle Blackburn, Ken Gerhardt, uh, David Weatherly, Nick Redfern, all of my really good friends, Chad Lewis, you name it. Every one of these people that I'm friends with and associated with, I hope that they write the best books and that their books, Josh Cutchin, another great guy, all of these people, that their books do really well and they sell a million copies and everybody is on board and cheering with them. That's what I want. I hope that for the best for the people. And that is me. That's what I want. That's what I want to see. And if I left anybody out, I apologize. Uh, expanded perspectives. Love those guys. Kyle and Cam, great dudes, man. These people put their blood, sweat, and tears into it. And up and comers like Ryan Edwards, who's really not really an up and comer anymore. That kid's doing really well. He got two books. He's doing great. Kenny Irish, another great guy. I wrote the forward for his second book, International Cryptids. Shout out to him. Ry Voss. Uh, Codega's Codex of Curiosity. See, I got it right that time. Um, those guys, these people, they're doing great work. And I love these people and I want to see them succeed. I want to see them do very well. And I never sit there and look at numbers and go, oh, that person's doing better than me. Oh, I hate that. Let me see what I can do. Let's make up uh, some kind of an account and go and troll and do crazy stuff. Now, leave people the hell alone. Just stay in your lane. Do what you got to do. Tell the people the stories and give them what they want and leave people the hell alone. That's all you got to do. But no, people can't do that. And they do participate in this. I had never heard this term until Brent Dill told me about it. It's called drama farming. And I didn't know what that was. I had never heard of it. But I promise you, I don't participate in it because I'm pretty sure what it is. And he I didn't actually have to explain it to me. I figured it out. It's people who plant the seeds so that later on there'll be drama and they get views. Well, I'm the opposite of that because when I talk about drama or stuff that's going on with me, I lose listeners and I don't get views. So I don't want that. That's the last thing I want. So anybody who's got half a brain who has cultivated a channel like we have, you're going to want the good. You're going to want the stories. You're going to want the encounters. You're going to want to bring on guests and talk and go back and forth like I just did with this guy, Bigfoot Michigan Rob. That is what I want. And that's all I want. And if you're on board with that, well, let's do what we got to do, okay? Any questions, put them in capital letters so that we can uh, we can move on here. Get some, I'm sorry, I'm behind on the chat. The chat moves so fast. And I'm one guy tonight, and I'm doing my best. See some really cool people in the chat. Samantha Phillips, great person. Uh, Tyler, another good guy. Donald Fuller, how you doing, Donald? Love cats in the house. Uh, Nikki's McSporin. Thank you for those uh, kind words. Very kind. Thank you for that. Uh, Blondes and Booze, of course, great friends of mine. I just mentioned them. Lucy, Lucy Fanning, 
Um, Lolo, I see all the, the usual suspects in here. David Buckholz, you had a very good uh, question a minute ago. If you'd repeat it, I don't know if you remember, but and I could answer that. Werewolf is in here. Shade Viking, what's going on, brother? Dragon Paw, Sugi. Too many people to name. I can't even mention them all. Great people. Oh, Wendy Eater says, Wolf, what was the doctor going to say about the different types of aliens? Okay. Well, are you talking about the shaman or are you talking about the, the regressionist? Make sure we get the question right there. I think I know what you're talking about. Aleph Prime said that. What did the doctor say about the various types of aliens? Man, that is an interesting subject. The various types of aliens, dude, that has really pulled me in. Now, here's the thing about that. I don't know what to call them. I'm not that person that says, well, these aliens come from Zeta Ureticuli, and these aliens come from blah, 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 Alpha Centauri. I don't know. I have no clue. Um, I, I do have a clue, I guess, but I don't really know, and I don't pretend to know, and I'm not going to tell you a bunch of BS and say, well, these aliens are this kind, and they like to eat you know, Twinkies, and these over here prefer Snickers. I don't know about all that. All I know is what people have told me who've dealt with them and experienced them, and I look for threats. I've talked about this on my show many times, that what we do here is we look for threats. And when somebody brings you a thread, uh, thank you, Madeline, for posting that. When somebody brings you a thread, then you pull it, right? I've been saying that for a long time. And since the inception of our show, threads are very important because somebody will give you a story. Now, I point to a particular case that I call this thing a gargoyle. We all kind of agreed it was me, Armando, and Tony, and Anthony. We were like, what is this? Let's call it a gargoyle. But people weren't telling us, hey, we saw a gargoyle. They said it's all a flying humanoid with a dog-like face and bat-like wings, and it had a chain around its neck. Probably not like this one, but something that looked like it was holding on and it was broken. Now, a person from Dayton, Ohio, saw this thing. Then people from Alamogordo, New Mexico, told me the story. Four years apart, but 11 years on the timeline. Same creature. See, and all by digging around, throwing them into a one-off pile, uh, which is the term I got from Lyle Blackburn. He says it's a one-off. You know, you throw it into that one-off pile. Him and David Weatherly like to use that term. I adopted it from them. And so I said, you know what? That's a good term for that. And I've created a folder called a one-off. Now, unfortunately, Tony's a bonehead, and he likes to throw everything into a one-off pile because, eh, I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. Let's just, whatever. I'm picking on you, Tony, but you do do that. So here's what happens. I go in there and I look through the one-off file and I'm like, here, and I'm putting it away under gargoyle. And then I go down and I said, oh, there's a, there's a gargoyle story there. Let's take a look. And lo and behold, there's a show because somebody had given me a story. And it didn't take long for me to make the connection. There's a threat. That's what I mean when I'm talking about it. You've all heard these stories before, I'm sure. And somebody one day in the comment section was real snotty, and they were like, this guy tries to tell the same stories over and over again. He's re retreading the same story, blah, 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 blah. Um, no, I don't. But I'm using those as reference. That's a reference because there are some cases that really do stand out. I would say, like, beware of dog. That's a very... That case stands out to me. I remember it very clearly. Or the blob-looking things that came from the sky in Washington. I remember those particular stories. Or the devil lives in Durango. Why? Because it was a minotaur. Or the people that saw the centaur-looking thing as children. Now, I've talked to multiple people who've seen these centaur-looking things. And it happened to all of them when they were children. Very strange, right? Those are threads. So you pull the thread. You see where it goes. And then we move on, and then you. This is how it works, right? So, without without getting too far afield, sticking to the subject, when someone comes to me and they tell you, "Hey, I had an alien abduction scenario," I'm all ears, right? So we get ready and we start talking. Well, this one guy, he tells me, he's like, I, I, he admitted he was an alcoholic, and he said that he had had multiple dogman encounters. And now, if I have time tomorrow. We'll tell you that. I will tell you about that. I do will. I will absolutely preface it though with the guy admitted that he's an alcoholic. So it is a story or encounters of some stories that you have to take with a grain of salt because I don't want to lead you astray and make you think that this is this really credible witness because by his own admission, he's an alcoholic. But it doesn't, I I personally do believe that he was being honest. But you got to remember somebody that's looking at through a lens of alcohol. 
So as long as I tell you, hey, this is what's going on here, I don't feel like I'm being deceitful or deceptive. Um, and I'm not giving myself an out and pat myself on the back. I'm just being honest. This is how I see things. Now, if you don't agree, you don't have to sit here. There's 530 people in this chat and you're free to go anywhere you want. And in fact, in another 30 minutes, I would encourage you just to leave. Go check out BMR unless I'm in the middle of a story, which I don't think I will be. But then take off. Go do what you got to do. Support my friends. So let's get back to the question here. <clears throat> the different types of alien beings. Um, I know this from what I've studied and from what I've. Hold on, folks. Work. What? Nothing important. Uh, so here, here's the thing, folks, What what um, what's always important, but not enough to stop what I'm doing. So here's the thing, folks, what I'm going to tell you is I have studied this subject intently. If I didn't, I wouldn't have started doing this last month and said, hey, through the month of, of, of February, I started month of February, I guess all of February, we did the, the alien abduction, uh, alien agenda, whatever. And then we started doing it in March. And I said, you know, what? let's just keep going. And now here we are in April. And we're still going, we're still doing, and we're still talking about it because there's a lot of weirdness to unwrap in this subject. One of the things I can tell you 100% is that there are multiple levels to this thing, multiple layers, like an onion. I believe that just as there are multiple, multiple alien species out there, that you can call them aliens or you can call them interdimensional, you can call them whatever you want. But there are people just like that. There are multiple, multiple people with different types of alien DNA. Some of them know that they have it and they go around and they live their lives amongst us. Some of them don't. And this is my belief. Okay. Mock it if you want. Believe me if you want. Don't believe me. Go and shout it from the rooftops and say, Josh Turner's crazy if it makes you feel better. But this is what I believe. And I do put myself out there at times and I open myself up for attack. And I know that. I'm going to get lampooned either way. People are going to mess with me no matter what I say. So you might as well just let it all hang out there. There are multiple species and they have interbred with humans <clears throat> in the way. Now, sometimes it happens through actual coitus and then, and then other times they just take DNA and they mix it and they, they are more advanced and they're able to create hybrids. Some of those will walk amongst us and not know it. Some of them may be third, fourth generation, fifth, sixth generation. Don't even know it. You have that DNA in you. I think that some of it is that's how it, it, you can explain these people. The guy on the boat who was freaking out over the crocodile, whatever, the pheromones. How do we know that he didn't really know? Like maybe he didn't know what he was. He was a guy from Indonesia. Maybe he had no clue that he had that DNA in him. And maybe he reacted weirdly like that. He didn't know. Or maybe he did know, and he's part of some clandestine, you know, group of people who are involved in all kinds of weirdness. We don't know. So I'm not going to pass judgment on that man because I have no way to know. But I could say this, multiple, multiple species from many, many different people that I've talked to. And there are hybrids. Like some of these with the proboscis and all that, they, they're they different types of mantids. Mantids tend to be a dangerous species, according to what I've been told by many different people. And they do kind of have a hierarchy. And this, what they believe is a, this, these people that told me this, it's a federation, but it's a loose federation. And they're at war with two other species. One is the Anunnaki or the descendants thereof. And the other is a reptilian Draco type species, and they are basically outlaws. And they are not part of this federation, and they fight them every chance they get. The federation, what I've been told, different numbers. One of them said there's 16 different groups, you know, and one of them said there's like 25 or 24. I don't know. But there are a lot. And then there, there, there are subcategories and things, too. And now, according to what I've been told, all of these different species are making human clones and they're adding DNA and mixing and splicing and doing all kinds of dastardly things that they shouldn't be doing. And some of these have enclaves that have lived in within this earth longer than we can even imagine. 
The inner earth, I believe, is where you will find the answers. Now, we live on the surface. We don't live in the inner earth. So I can't go down there and say, hey, guys, guess what? I'd like to talk to you. Because even after talking to a professed vampire, he was scared to go into the inner earth and not go beyond what he called the first tier. He says there's seven tiers. The, 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 the last tier being hell. Is that true? I don't know. I'm not a vampire, and I haven't met an elf-like being with, with white skin that looked like a, a cross between a lizard and a and some sort of like alien gray. I don't know. But this is what he told me. Now, I've talked to lots of other people who have visited the inner earth, and they've talked about little miniature people. Some of them the size of this can. Some of them about the size of this bottle. And even weirder still, some of them that were beyond that. They were small, so, so diminutive that they that you could dump them. But they had civilizations, and they all kind of lived in their own little honeycomb world. And some of them are taller. Some of them are little dwarf-like beings that would come up to your waist if you're the average six-foot male, which I'm about four inches taller than that. But still, you get my point. So I can't tell you what is swimming down in that, that murkiness down there. All I know is that it's right below our feet. And to quote Barton Nunley, and I think he was quoting someone else that told him this, and maybe I'm wrong, and I'm sorry if I am, Barton, but I think you said that if we could see but what we were walking on, we would never walk. We would never move. We would just sit there in terror. And I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Freaky stuff. Really freaky stuff. Shade Viking says this. He says, well, I also think aliens are spirits or physical clone type and humanoids made by spirits to do work in the physical realm for spirits, etc. Any other questions you got? <clears throat> Put them in all capitals and I'll do the best I can to answer them. You got a lot of good comments tonight, Nikki. I appreciate that. You got a lot of really nice things to say. Venture Security says, it's important to understand that Satan is the great deceiver. He is playing the long game. What better than to divide us with any theory that does not involve Christ? Possibly. <clears throat> Possibly. I don't believe, though, that this doesn't include God or Christ. It doesn't matter. Because whoever created all things created us. And I'll say, I'll say this, I'll say, I'll say it again, I've said it before. We can make clones. We can clone ourselves. We can make copies. Those clones could grow up and make copies of themselves. A copy of a copy of a copy of a copy doesn't matter. Does that make them God? No, it doesn't. But we can all create. The aliens can create. The subnature, which I think are separate from the aliens, actually, um, the dwarves and the elves and all that, they can create. They can also shapeshift. They can also create illusions. But humans can do that too. I talked to a guy who practiced Buddhist shamanism, and he told me he had been practicing it for 36 years. That's a long time. He told me that he could actually shapeshift at one point in time. He said now he hasn't been practicing. He doesn't do it anymore. He speaks eight languages. He's consorted with aliens, demons, angels, all kinds of other beings. Blah, 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 you name it. I could bring him on the show and have him tell you all kinds of wild stories. And I probably will. But the point is that this guy only knows what he knows. He can only tell you what has happened to him and what he has studied and his, his experience. So what I tell you is it takes all of us. I don't like to use the term it takes a village because it sounds communist. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this. It does take a village of all of us, a community that needs to be built, a real community that needs to be in place. And not with one where one person is the top dog and everybody has to dance to their tune. Nothing could be further from the truth of what we need. People have accused me of that, and that is not what I want at all. All I want is for people that are being buttheads to, to go away. That's it, period. Don't make fun. Don't cause problems. Let's all see what we can come up with, right? I don't want to be in charge of any kind of community. That's too much responsibility. I just want to be a part of it. And I'm thankful that I could be a part of the rich tapestry of what is being built as and labeled a community. 
That's it. That's all I want. I give you my word on that. So what these people say and do, it's important that we all work together because sometimes a charlatan comes along and they say all kinds of wild crap. And that person is a fraud. And then they build a YouTube channel and they go and they spread more wild crap and do all kinds of fakery and hoaxery. And so you do need people that'll come in and say, hey, you're not correct. But I'm tired of that person being me and I don't want to get attacked anymore. So I'm going to mind my own business and just be like, go ahead, do what you want. And if you choose to go and be around that person, but if you come and you ask me, I'll tell you and I'll tell you the truth. And if it gets back to them, well, more's the pity. But I try to look out for my people. And my people are the people that are in this chat, the people that are going to watch this show, the 10,000, 12,000 people that will eventually see it, um, sometimes more, sometimes less. There's 528, 530 people basically in this chat right now. And it's 10, almost 1040 p.m. where I'm at. That may sound like a lot of people for, for a chat, whatever, but that's not my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is to have bigger numbers, larger numbers, because I want more people to be exposed to the reality that we live in and to know what I know, which is that we know very little about the nature of reality. When we first start out as children, we are more in tune with the nature of reality than we are when we die, depending on when we die. And that's sad. It should be a progression. You should be as a child with all this knowledge, and it should be fostered into that child. And, hey, you saw something? Well, tell us about it. Oh, you believe that you were another person before this? Tell us about it. Instead of indoctrinating them with all kinds of toxic stuff that, that shuts them down. So if they do see a Bigfoot, they're told they're crazy. You didn't see a Bigfoot. You're nuts. Stop lying. Stop making up stories. There are no such thing as aliens. Ghosts don't exist. You need to be punished because you're saying a bunch of crazy stuff and it doesn't go along with fill-in-the-blank religion. That is not correct as far as I'm concerned, and that child needs to be brought up not with their imagination just running wild and making stuff up or any little thing they hear or see is a ghost, a demon, an alien, or a Bigfoot. But you know what? They do exist. And folks, I'm here to tell you. I've talked to thousands and thousands of people who've seen them. Now, I personally have not seen a Bigfoot. I don't, I, like I said before, I was with my wife and she saw it. She saw it. She had a better angle at it than I did. I did see something and I can't explain what it was because it was so massive that it, and, I, and it was in a pasture, but it wasn't a cow. That's all I can say. I, I can't say, and I don't claim it as a Bigfoot experience because like I said before, folks, I'm not going to lie about it. I don't know what I saw. But I damn sure did see a dog man or werewolf or whatever you want to call it. And I got a real good look at that thing. So my thinking, and it would be common sense, the power of deduction, which we have the God, the brain that God gave us. You, if, if a dog man exists, why not a Bigfoot? So when somebody comes to me and says, I saw a Bigfoot, which a lot of times it's just like, oh, I saw it on the side of the road, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then sometimes, well, they get chased. Like Nathaniel, when he was on his, on his ATV, and this thing attacked him, chased after him. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to sit there and tell that guy, you didn't see what you saw. And even if I think the person's not being completely honest, and sometimes people add things to the story, which you're going like, okay, I believe part of it, but not all of it. And then other times, and I don't pass judgment. I think that they're just misremembering things. But it's not my job to judge them and tell them you didn't see this and you didn't, you know, let, let's 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 change it to fit my narrative. Okay. Let's change it. Let's put false memories into your brain and alter what you saw to make it different. And there are a lot of researchers that do that. And some people are weak and they go along with it for fear of ridicule. So they can be accepted, so they can be part of the cool kids club or whatever their reasoning is. People come to me all the time and they're like, I told so and so, and I know who these people are that they've talked to. And they're like, and they told me this is what I saw. And I'm like, how the hell do they know what you saw? Are they experts at this? Do they? Because there are none. 
So how the hell do they know what you saw? They can tell you, oh, I've heard of this before, and I think this is maybe what you saw. But some of these people are very adamant. Well, what you saw was a da-da-da. Well, example, Bigfoot story. Not a real long one, and I'm not going to drag it out. But there's a woman who said, who gave me, I met her with Ken Gerhard. We were at the uh, paranormal, um, God, it's a conference they have every year. Um, it's It was in October, I believe. Anyway, it was back, it was the Black Swan, and it was very interesting. And Anne Celine was there, and Ken Gerhard, we were all there. And somebody gave us a story. And then she sent me sound clips and some other things. It was really interesting. And long story short, because I'm not going to get into the whole encounter, one day I'll tell you or have her come on and tell me. I have the, 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 the sound clips that she sent me. This thing was making crazy noises. Crazy noises. Somebody said, you encountered a gugwi. Now, she's going like, what, what the hell is that? Never even heard of it. And I said, I have. Some people think it's like a cross between a dog man and a Bigfoot. And she's like, what the hell is a dog man? You know? Luckily for her, Ken Gerhardt did his presentation. And he talked a little bit about that and said, hey, Josh Turner from Austin, he's, he can tell you about the dog man, blah, blah, blah. Read his book. So here's the thing. And by the way, the book is called Werewolves and the Dog Man Phenomena. And my Bigfoot book is called The Bigfoot Phenomena. So go check those out. Hope soon I'll have at least two more books written. But it's been hell because I've been going through hell and doing all kinds of stuff and working. And I'm, we're we're so, we're working a lot. And then I'm having to do the show, and then we're being attacked and whatever. But the point is that this person was told and led to believe that this is what that was. Well, when she gave me her story and I started going through it, I thought that doesn't even sound like a cross between a Bigfoot and a a dog man at all. You know what it sounds like? She said, what? I said, a werewolf. And she's like, a werewolf? Like she couldn't believe it. And I said, look, did it have backward bent legs? Oh well, yeah, I did. Okay. Bigfoot don't typically have that. Did it have a wolf-like head? She goes, somewhat. And then she said, but it was a shorter muzzle. I said, were the ears tall, straight up, or, or rounded? She's there, tall, straight Okay. Yeah. You saw a dog man, what they call a dog man. And she thought the term was silly, and I told her, I agree. It sounds goofy. It sounds like some, step right up, folks. Come and see the amazing dog boy. Here he is. I uh, throw him a bone for a nickel. You can take a look at him, man. Uh, it sounds like some kind of carny trick, right? So it's ridiculous. But this woman was being led to believe. And at that same conference, I got three different three different reports. At that same conference, one was a ghost that threw glass at somebody. And literally, the man showed me a scar on his face where he had been hit with it. Me and Anthony were in shock. I was like, wow, that happened from a ghost? He said, yeah, it was you. his wife was practicing scrying. It's a whole story. But anyway... Then I met another woman who saw a green, which I do believe this was a Bigfoot, and Ken was there for that one, and so was Ann. And my wife, we both talked about it, and we were like, that is weird. But this thing had green all over it, but it was a Bigfoot. It, it's the, every description other than the green fur screamed out to me, Bigfoot. The other encounter that the lady had, definitely Dogman. The, the, the sounds of this thing screeching, screaming, whatever. I can tell you, if I play it, everybody's going to be like, oh, that's bull crap. It's not whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I don't want to get into a big fight. And I don't put pictures up here because then that causes problems because people are going to be like, hey, whatever. Chris Anderson says, what's up, Don? I got the XRP grudge bash on the TV and PRT on the phone. What is that? But uh, anyways, let's move on here. I'm way behind on the chat. Give me your thoughts. Tell me what you think. And then I got to run because I know it's late, but I got to eat dinner. And then I got to try to maybe do a few things and then go to the gym. I didn't get to work out last night, unfortunately. What does it say? Andrew Brown says, Tony Merkel said some group tried to get him to use whatever stories they had 
and then they will pay him. They have infiltrated everything. Yeah, I believe it. And I think Tony's a pretty credible guy as far as I know. I mean, but I'm sure he probably didn't use him. But And Love Cat posted this. Thank you, Love Cat. appreciate that. Post everything that you want to hear that is said, post it in capital letters so I can get to it. And I need a chair. This chair sucks, man. I'm telling you. If this chair was a person, I'd be like, hey, you know. Varying opinions are interest scares is varying opinions are important. The more you look, the more you will find. This is one way that the Lord can reveal himself to you. I agree. A closed mind is not as receptive to truth as one that is fixed. Yeah, you're right. But like I always say, don't be so open-minded that your brain falls out. Some people are just, they get taken advantage of because they believe everything. Now, when I tell you a story on here, I'm not telling you 100% that this person is telling the truth because I have no way to know that. So I don't ever post on there true, scary stories. Who the hell does that? Oh, yeah, some guy that lives in Louisiana. What I'm going to tell you, though, is that I don't do that. That's ridiculous because you don't know if those are true, scary stories. Now, scary stories, but 100% true? You don't know. All it is is somebody told you that. So, like I said, thinking caps on. Look and do the comments, folks, before I bail, before I bounce. <laughs> uh, Lucy Fanning, yes. The great vault of whatever. Mm -hmm. I prefer to call him Vulture. That's my name for him. You know, and his, uh, his love interest is always stalking us and chats and things and whatever, dude. <laughs> They can't go anywhere without a fan club that's not actually fans. They're just stalkers, bad people, whatever, people that love to mess around. DJ Tyler, thank you for that donation. Trying to catch up on the chat here, folks. I don't have two co-hosts to me tonight. I will tomorrow, though. Well, Chris Anderson, there are definitely weird spots in Austin, weird spots and weird people. They're always talking about keep Austin weird like they have to work at it and remind everybody. They're keeping it pretty freaking weird, dude. They're keeping it pretty freaking weird over here. Yeah, believe me. I would strongly suggest, so if you guys want to keep it going, to go and hit up uh, in about 10 minutes, go hit up uh, our friends over at BMR. Him and Chris will probably do a really good job. They always do. <clears throat> Thank you for that donation. I just know I just saw that, Venture. Appreciate that. I was way up in the chat on there. That is really nice of you. That is incredible. William Bedard, $10. He says, hit that like button. 560 watching and 40 likes. That's it? That's all I got for likes? I know, like me, so entertained and just forgot. Go hit it. Oh, folks, please do me a favor. Like and subscribe. That really helps. And some people have been reporting that they've been unsubscribed. So if you got to come back and resubscribe, I appreciate it. And I'm sorry that that's happening to you. I don't know why it's happening. I just know that it is. I woke up today. Uh, this is no lie. I had... Uh, 34,467. And then later in the day, I looked again and I had 34,455. And I'm like, what? So all those people unsubscribed, and, oh, we changed our mind, you know? And then we were right back up again later on. And I'm just like, okay, I, well, whatever, dude. I'm not even going to pretend to know what the hell is going on with that. That's a cool comment right there, Venture. I appreciate it. So, Venture, I take it that you have a security company. And I think we've I think we've interacted before already. The birds are singing. Who wants to see the birds on the show again? They've gotten bigger. They're, they're they don't they're not very big, but they're older. And Le Leonidas is is a Tony's bird, 
And um, my bird, which really has become kind of Anthony's bird. He spends more time with him than I do. I just don't have the time for the little dude. But um, Kiwi, he's mine. He's a cool little dude. I just don't get to spend much time with him. I'm always – if, if I were to sit him in there, he'd try to fly around, and I got a ceiling fan going and stuff. So, I, you know, and I get hot, so I got to, you know, it's a shame. I don't even get time to look at my fish. I love to sit there and look at the fish. It's so relaxing, right? But I don't have time. And like today, I had to make like a 40-minute video about some crab and just wish people would just act right. And then love how they say, we're not trying to take you down. We're just saying that to everybody who will listen, but we're not trying to take you down. I'm like, sure. I wish I had a camera. Honey Butters is right at the door. Yeah. Honey Butters. She hears me, but she can't see me because there's there. If you could see that there's clothes right here that are in the way. I have shirts that I hang up for the show, like this one. And there's a rack right here. And she, she can't see me. <laughs> Honey Butters. One of our cats, her and Elvira, my little dogs, they're both like they're so sweet. Honey Butters is a rescue. Um, her story, not that you care, but I mean, her she has a little backstory, and she had been rehomed three times. And unfortunately, everybody had kind of given up on her. And the lady that gave her to us told us she was up front. She said, She's got some issues, man. She was a homeless cat, she's really sweet, but she's been. You know, rehomed three times. Now, she did claw up and tear up one of my chairs, and the chair was a $500 chair, and that really sucked. But she didn't know any better, man. She's been, you know, feral at one point. And, but she's, she's like, for being, having been feral at one point, you know, in her life, and also having been, um, having to be rehomed multiple times, you know, um, what they didn't realize, dum dums, she was in heat. So when the cat goes into heat, they're like, meow, meow. And it's really, really, really mind-numbing and nerve-wracking. And it drove me, Nellie, and everyone else in the house nuts. And even the other pets were going like, what is this thing? Come on. You brought it into our house? Come on. And so I was just like, look, everybody, the cat has some issues. My wife was going crazy. We were like, but then we figured it out real quick. We knew, okay, she's in heat. That's what it is. And she's acting crazy. And she was feral at one time, so she's a little clawsy. But she got past it. And when we got her uh, spayed, she stopped. Everything was fine. But you have to wait until they get out of heat to do it, right? So we had to suffer through it. But it paid off because she's a good animal. She's a good egg. And she just wanted to be friends. And she got to know the other animals, and she wanted to be around them. And she wanted to be around us. But she's not a bad little – there she is. Everybody honey butters here. Turn the light on so she can, everybody can get a look at her. Gotta hold her carefully. Yeah, just just show her to the camera. camera. She's still kind of skittish when she yeah. when she she's still kind of new to being held. Yeah, she don't like uh -huh. being held too much. It's okay. I got you. It's okay. okay. Hold her up because she, she's not like Panzer and, and Mardis. Nothing bad's gonna happen. Just set her right here. Set her right here. There you go, Mama. There you go. It's okay. Yes, go. she's gonna try. To run. <laughs> she's gonna run. If it's just me in here, look, there goes Elvira, her little pal. Go get Elvira too, because she, she'll be calmer if Elvira's in. Elvira. Come on. Beans? No beans. Beans oh, is a hyperactive energy, which kind of up disrupts everything. Hey, Elvira. What's up, baby? This is my sweet girl. Oh, you're full of grass burst. Yeah. And what are you doing, Beans? Look at Beans. You you want to be on camera, too? <laughs> Y'all are just so sweet. Look at you. And I tell you what, why'd you get in those grass burst? Because you were chasing them other dogs next door, weren't you? That's what you do. You just love to do that. These are sweet little dogs. <laughs> this one we rescued from our neighbors who had her out in the cold. They had her out in the cold, and she there's beans right there. What's up, beansy, beansy, weensy? My little, my little doodle, a golden doodle. So this one here was a uh, beans get so jealous about petting the other animal. Yeah, this one was a rescue. They left her out in the cold, and Christmas Eve, and you were out there in that cold, and so we gave him a hundred bucks. Said here, take it. Let's take your dog. <laughs> Say hi, and she became friends with Panzer, and y'all played and played and played, didn't you? Let me do. I'm doing the show. Okay, I love you. 
Y'all are sweet kids. She comes back. To me. She's like, I'm not leaving. Well, you can leave them in here. That's fine. They're not going to hurt anything. But uh, and where's my pig? Where's he at? He's out there somewhere doing what he does. He's laying on his bed. Laying on his little bed. Take a picture and put it on the deal when his little bed. Take well, a picture. What I, uh, if I join the the stream yard uh, from my phone, mm -hmm. uh, I can just take a little video of them and they can each. Oh no! Yeah, show the pig. Show them and everybody can look at them. All right. Uh, you just gotta send me the invite on the Facebook. Just copy and paste it. Yeah, it's up here. I love animals, folks. I know I post things about animals, and I know some people have made fun of me for that. They're like, oh, that's stupid. Yeah, he's talking about animals, whatever. Not everything has to be about weird stuff and paranormal stuff. I mean, come on, dude. Animals are part of a big part of my life. Um, I went on a date with a girl one time years ago. I think I said this on the show. And she told me she didn't like animals, and I was like, oh, I'm done. How can you not? She goes, I'm not into animals. I don't love animals. And I don't know. I think she was some kind of alien hybrid herself, and I'm not even color. not even joking about that. But I've given up because people are going to hate me, and they're going to make fun of me no matter what I do. They're going to say all kinds of bad things about me. I could, you know, I could balance the budget of the country, which I actually believe I could. I really have ideas about how we could do that. I could, like, you know, fix a lot of problems. I could probably solve world hunger. In fact, that's not really a hard thing to do. It's just a matter of human greed. But once you do that, then all these people with special interests are going to come after you and they're going to attack you. And it doesn't matter what you do, they're going to hate you. You could solve all the issues of humanity and they're going to hate you. I mean, I'm not comparing myself to Jesus, but as Christians, we're supposed to be as Christ-like as we can. But look at what they did to him. He came down and said, hey, you're wrong. Kill him. And that was the end of it. Or so they thought. But we all know that that wasn't the end. They just wished it was. Turn that light off for me so I don't look like a vampire in here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Elvira, are you going to stay up here with me? You want to come back up here? Come on. I know you want to be with me. She always wants to be around Daddy. Look at her. You just love to be around me. You're the sweetest dog in the house. Yes, you are. Don't let Beans hear that or Baby because then they'll, they'll argue about it. Tony thinks it's Banjo, but I think it's you, Elvira, Mistress of the Bark. <laughs> Here comes Martis. Martis is the ambassador cat. He's the one that knows how to open and close the doors. Now, he opens the doors. He doesn't know how to close them, does he? Elvira's like, no, he doesn't. He leaves them open, doesn't he? And then y'all run in there and get locked in somewhere. And they love to go into the garage and play. And the ferrets, we have ferrets. There's two still, Story and Daisy. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Snowy passed away and so did Stogie. Uh, but um, then we have two guinea pigs, Galactus and uh, Thanos. There he and is. There's truffles. What's up, that boy? What's up, sweet boy? Truffles. Truffles. Can you hear my voice? I don't know if you can hear me. Truffle bear. But if he hears the rappers, he'll come running because he thinks I'm going to feed him. Come on, Truffles. <laughs> now you got to smack your lips. Watch, smack your lips. Can you hear there it? you go. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah. If he thinks you're eating, boy, he gets up. He's ready to go. Do it again. What was that? What was that? <laughs> what was that? Truffles. <laughs> not you. Not you. Beans Watch and the wire come running in here. Y'all's names are Truffles, Marlon, Panzer, and everybody there it else's. Is. <laughs> What's up, Bubba? What are you doing? Beanie. It's always like in the middle of everything. Oh. But Tina has a funny story about truffles. There's baby. Baby, that's inappropriate. Don't do that. Come here, truffles. Come here, fat boy. You water yourself over here. 
Venture Security had another thing he says here. What is Josh? No one wants truth or transparency. Yeah, you provide yeah. it. You put a target on your chest. Thank you for your martyrdom. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it martyrdom, but um, you definitely get attacked. Oh, in your bed. Don't yeah, that's true, too. It's your bed, dude. Just lay down. David Buckle says, whatever field you're in, whatever job you have, you're going – I'm going to tell you a quick story about that. Uh, you're going to piss somebody off, and then somebody's going to not like you for no reason. That's the truth. It's the way it always is. And then Joyce says, that's right. People don't have to like you, but then they should just leave you alone. Exactly. There was a lady that listened to our show, and she told us about dog she, – she was into dog shows. And this is kind of a rough story because it really hit home to me, and it made me – emotional because I love animals and I have a lot of animals. We all do. And I don't have them. We're all just living together. We're just, they're not mine. I don't own them. I don't believe in that, but they, we all live together. And I'm not talking about like a hippy dippy communist thing. I'm saying that these people, or these animals, I'm sorry. They, they're special to me just like a human. Okay. <clears throat> But I more important to me than people know. I know the animals are animals. Great. So the internet's blinking out. So here, here's what I'm going to tell you. She said, believe me, she's like the cryptid field, the ghost community, whatever you want to call it, none of it is any more toxic than the, than the other fields. She's like, I'm into to dog shows. And one of her friends won a contest where she's from. And someone went to her house and did something to her animals out of spite. So that's the kind of people you're dealing with. They're so jealous and so angry and so embittered that they will hurt little animals because of their anger toward her being successful. That really broke my heart to hear that. And it makes you lose faith in humanity, not in God, but humanity. So, folks, I'm going to run so I don't step on the toes of my brothers and sisters who are doing their own show um, I love to be on here, but I got to be nice and do do for other people. So Sarah Jane says, Wolf, I happened to fall across, fall across your episode on DMR where you told the audience you'd met and fell in love with Nelly. Yeah. And how you were going to start your show. It was so sweet and cute. Yeah, I did. I met her and I fell in love. You know, she was at the airport. And I'll say this before I get out. And I was working out with a friend of mine. I've known him for years, and uh, he's an African-American dude, man. He's real, always talks with his hands, real animated, real friendly guy, you know. And he says, he's like, how you been, man? I said, I'm a little bummed, you know. And I said, I think I met the love of my life. And he goes, really? So when is when you getting married, bro? He starts talking to me, and I tell him, I said, look, he's at the airport right now. And he's like, yo, dog, what the hell are you doing here with us? Go get her. Go stop her. I said, I can't. She's got to go back home, and then maybe something will happen down the road. He goes, because that never works out, that long-distance stuff. He goes, he pokes me in my chest, and he says, take your ass to the airport and go get her. So I called Nellie, and I said, have you boarded the plane yet? And she's like, no, no, I haven't. I said, don't. And she's like, don't? I said, please, please don't. I get a little emotional. I talk about it. I said, I love you. Please don't, dude. Don't, don't leave. I said, stay. And she goes, and do what? I said, I don't know. I'm driving over there to get you. Please don't. And she goes, I said, do you trust me? And there was a little bit of a pause. And she goes, yeah, I do. I trust you. I said, I love you. And she says, I love you too. I said, don't leave. And then when she got in the truck, I said, how about you be my wife? You know? And it sounds like a storybook, but it's what happened. Miracles do happen. Found somebody that loved me for me. Didn't think it would ever happen that way, but it did. That's right, Madeline. It sure is. I'm going to say this, and I don't know if it'll help or work or whatever, but you guys out there that don't like me, 
I don't know if you're watching. I don't know if you care. Probably not, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't have enough time to, to talk to you and deal with you and whatever. I'm a very busy guy, and I just don't have that kind of time. I'm sorry that we offended you in any way we shape or form. I truly am. I, I, we really do want peace and just want to be left alone. All I want to do is do my show and make content. And I just don't want any more drama. I didn't want to fight anymore. And people have attacked me for that. For not wanting to fight anymore. Go look. It's in PRT News. I mean, Nelly posted it in there. People saying horrible things about me because I quit fighting. Calling me a coward and saying that I back down, which I did not. My enemies came waving the white flag. What are you going to do? You're going to just keep kicking them? Why? It's over. They said horrible, mean things. Get over it. We're adults. Move on. I just want peace. We all do. We all want to be left alone. Everybody that donated, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I don't want to take up too much more time. I'm trying to get down to the bottom of the chat here in case I missed anything. Oh, Liberty, thank you for that donation. <laughs> Nikki Sparan. Nikki, you're on fire tonight. He says, Wolf, who has the best hat, Ken or Lyle? That is a loaded question. Those are very good friends of mine. I'm close with both of them, and I'm not going to say. Um, I think, I, think I, I, I will say, I will say this like Lyle's hat because Ken's has gotten so old that he's it's kind of rolled up and he's kind of like he's never changed it's like that's his hat that's the way he's going to do and Lyle's is a little more shapely at this point but otherwise they're dead even and me I'm the man of many hats like Barton and Ken Lyle you know they all have that same look whatever I do have a friend of mine and he's been on the show y'all know chief who's working on a hat for me because he does make hats. and But my hat is big and weird, and so he's got to make it a certain way, whatever. And, um, you know, me and Chief had it out at one point because he's a fighter and I was a fighter, and I, we didn't agree on some things on how to coach. But at the end of the day, he's the black belt in jujitsu. I'm not. And so I can see that it's his, his deal. He can coach how he wants. Now, when it comes to boxing, I believe I can. I know what I'm doing with that. But when it comes to jujitsu, I say, hey, you know what you're doing more than I do. It'd be like me saying, look, I know you're the chef, but I'm going to teach you how to make these pastries, right? You got to concede when you're wrong. I was wrong about that. Not everything, but, you know. Deadpool Kid says, any chance that both aliens are spare? Let's put post it on there. Any chance both alien spirits are connected to our collective consciousness? It almost seems like a link. Yeah, very, very, very possible. Very possible. And then Wendy says, you answered about the guy who, yeah. So BMR is live. I just got told by my wife to shut your big mouth and get off the, the show. Uh, Josh Castro, thank you for that. Uh, uh, Josh Castro, or is that, what does it say, Castro? Yeah, there you go, because I can't see. My eyes are as good as they used to be. And uh, the last donation, Deadpool Kid again, and he says, one of the problems with ufology, some people treat it as a religion, which is not. Every time it's the same talking points, chakras, this, vibrations, that, all that gobbledygook yoga, this yoga, that. <laughs> Uh, it is. That's they. You're just. Yep, you're right. Uh, somebody says here, Wolf. Someone said about the people with Rh negative blood are aliens. I've heard that too. Don't know if it's true. Um. So let me get out of here. I'm trying to get down to the bottom of the chat and make sure I didn't miss anything. Great people. Wish I could see more of the chat and answer more of the questions. But we've been here for three hours, man. We usually do two on 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 Saturdays. Um, I know sometimes we end up doing a marathon or something. Says so Sarah Jane. Okay, you were such an inspiration. Well, thank you for speaking for the many who don't have a voice. I try to. Not everybody's enamored with me. I get it. But we try to fool these vast miscreants. 
right? Triggeration, Kung Fu, Karate, Kimbo. I'm a ham. I'm just kidding. I'm messing around. Damn, so far down in the chat. Another one. Deadpool Kid again says, now if only there was a cat girl cryptid who's looking for a good time. Oh, come on now. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Austin is definitely on the weird side. Dorothy Metcalf. She lives here. She knows. Okay, Miguel Guetta. I need another three cases of PRT cookies, Josh, so I can recruit more cult members for the camera fundraiser. Love you just now. We got one of the cameras already. And then we so we have two all to get, but we need a couple more, and then we need a computer. But we'll get it. We'll get the equipment. We're, we're getting good donations. That'll help. Gosh, I'm trying to get down to the bottom of this, folks. In case I miss anybody. Jeez, Louise, this chat is long. I'm making sure I didn't miss anybody who donated. I'm making sure that my phone can't hold on there. Okay, so I guess uh, I guess I did. That's it. Thank you, folks. We well, appreciate it. Thank you for everybody who tuned in. I hope you had a, a good show. Um, we'll be back every Saturday doing the same thing. And tomorrow night, remember, we got a lot of really cool, interesting encounters to talk about. We got to get into it, man. It's going to happen, folks. It's going to happen. I'm trying to look at everything from a more positive uh, outlook, more positive perspective. Let's just try to keep rolling, doing what we got to do. Let's try to just get rid of the hate. Get rid of the hate. That's all we got to do. And we just keep on rolling, PRT. Thank you for everybody who donated. We love you and good night.